Hello, everyone. Welcome to History with Hersafet. I'm your host, Chris, a.k.a. Hersafet. Today, we'll be continuing our discussion on the decade that was the 90s with the year 1998. The views shared on this podcast come from your everyday, ordinary people. My hope is that it'll give a unique perspective on history. The future podcast will be doing the year 1999 and another What's the Deal with with the What's the Deal with Psychedelics. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, as for today, we have uh, Esteban back with us. After a little bit of Holy a hiatus. Uh, Hola. Yes. Hola. 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 I have returned. I have returned. Uh, we, uh, Brad and Nick are also with us. Uh, so we have hey. a full show today. Yep. Oh, hey there. Yep. Uh, we'll get right into it with our uh, weird news of the week. Uh, one of my favorite uh, segments that we've implemented. Uh, today, uh, this week's article is titled... Man hid cherry pies under women's car tires to see them bend over. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, well thought out plan. <laughs> uh, this is actually kind of old. Uh, I guess this is from 2018, uh, but still, it was so ridiculous that I was like, "All right, hold on, I got to read in this." So, it says on Tuesday, August 7th of 2018, 43-year-old Kurt Michael Fulton was arrested after he allegedly hid cherry pies, VHS tapes. <laughs> and other various items underneath the parked cars of women drivers so he could see them bend over and pick them up whilst he watched from a distance with binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why pies? All right, he's just got like random shit in his car. <laughs> just... People aren't going to question that. <laughs> Wait, a cherry pie? This doesn't make any sense. Uh, Saginaw County Sheriff William uh, Fetterspiel reported in a press conference, Fulton was involved in an incident on Sunday in the parking lot of a Target store on 2772 Titabawasi Road, Cultural Township in Saginaw, Michigan. So this happened in Michigan. What? So that was all. Just ignore it. If you're from there, <laughs> yeah, ignore okay. what I just said there. Yeah. Fulton, somewhere in Michigan. Let's just switch it to that. Uh, Fulton would wait in his car whilst, that's the second whilst, uh, an unsuspecting female victim parked their car in the Target car park. The victim would exit their vehicle, enter the store. Fulton would run over and place various items in front or behind the tires of the car. These items included laptops, VHS tapes, and McDonald's cherry pies. Uh, Fulton would run back to his car to gain a better vantage point and would stalk his victims with the use of binoculars. The women would then be forced to bend over to see what they've driven over after hearing a crunching or squishing sound. Uh, they heard the pies? Really? I don't think you could hear it. Anyway, uh, the sheriff commented on Fulton's behavior. <laughs> it's very creepy, unacceptable behavior. That's the best way to describe it. It's just creepy. Uh, a 25-year-old woman called the police after she discovered a laptop had been placed underneath her vehicle. Uh, Kurt Michael Fulton was arrested and charged with aggravated stalking and a habitual offender second offense enhancement as it was discovered that Fulton had been arrested for the same crime in 2007. Uh, he is being held on the in the county jail with a bond of 80000 Uh Yes. So oh, that, wow. Yeah. Man, this, uh, this guy's a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just go send him to Guantanamo, man. Yeah. So he got arrested for that in tw 2007, the same thing, and uh -huh. it's 2018. So, wow. Is I wonder just, how many know? cherry pies he went through. Right? <laughs> you probably figured, yeah. the, wait, this laptop's too expensive. I can get you cheaper than this, right? Yeah. How many laptops <laughs> he got lying around? Yeah, why, yeah, why, <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know. You think he would have perfected his craft right? after the, all 11, that time. 11 years later, like, he maybe upgraded from the laptop to the cherry pie. I mean, <laughs> the the whole women bending over thing is pretty deplorable, but uh, I get why would you why you would put like something like a cherry pie behind someone's car tire, you know, just to watch them drive over it and just yeah. <laughs> all over the place. Like that's satisfying. Yeah, oh. maybe that was what it really was, and everyone mistakenly thought it was the other thing. Oh yeah. man, he's innocent, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah he just started. He, oh. just he just liked he just liked things getting run over. That's all. Yeah, I would, I would have liked to have heard. I would have liked to have heard his lawyer like try to make that argument. Like, no, oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. It's not what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. He was actually uh, just getting rid of these pies. It was <laughs> cleaning up a mess. Yes. He's like they backed over the chariot. They thought they ran over something, so they think it's blood. Oh my god! You know all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm. Ran Con over a squirrel or something. Condensing right, right. it so we can put it in the trash and save the environment. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. He's an environmentalist. That's all it is. <laughs> Ooh, or maybe the the laptop, the laptops or the VHS tapes had some, uh, you know, 
stuff he wanted to get rid of on them ah, you know right. it could be yeah. that too what better way to get rid of them than to make a stranger run them over by chance <laughs> I and watch it... them bend over. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I bet he had incriminating videos of him watching women bend over in parking lots <laughs> Whoa, on man. his laptop. It's getting like layers of yeah. weird uh, fetishes. Yeah. This is yeah. a lifetime movie. Definitely. Definitely. <clears throat> plot. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that will do it for our weird news of the week. And without further ado, we will now move into the timeline of our podcast, the timeline of 1998. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, or Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> They served a search warrant on me, which allowed them to view and photograph my body, including my penis, my buttocks, my lower torso, thighs, and any other error that they wanted. Susan, I'm gay. That Diana, Princess of Wales, has in fact been killed in that car accident. A Senate panel describes Y2K, the year 2000 computer bug, as a worldwide crisis. And on January 17, 1998, the Drudge Report breaks the story about President Bill Clinton's alleged affair with Monica Lewinsky, which will lead to the House of Representatives impeachment of him later in the year. Clinton mm -hmm. would deny the allegations, claiming he did not have sexual relations with Ms. Lewinsky, that it was merely a blowjob, which, if you took the same health class as he, is somewhere near first base. Uh, on February 20th, 1998, Iraqi President Saddam Hussein negotiates a deal mm -hmm. with UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. It's already started. I can't even get it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's reached. All right. Let me start it again. <clears throat> February 20th, Iraqi President Saddam Hussein negotiates a deal with UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, allowing weapon inspectors to return to Baghdad, preventing military action by the United States and Britain while paving the way for Arby Land, an Arby's themed amusement <laughs> park with an Arby's sauce filled wave pool. <laughs> Uh, on March 14, 1998, Sega announces the discontinuation of Sega Saturn in North America to prepare for the launch of its successor, the Dreamcast, beginning the greatest comeback in gaming history. Um, yes. uh, on March 27, 1998, Viagra is approved by the FDA for public use. A spokesman for the drug claimed the commercial depicting a woman asking a man if he had a bottle of Viagra in his pocket, or if he was just happy to see her, was the catalyst for getting the drug approved. A later draft of the commercial added the man answering the woman with both, but was pulled from the cutting room floor. On April 30th, 1998, seven television stations broadcast the suicide of maintenance worker Daniel V. Jones on live television. The incident causes many to criticize Los Angeles television stations' practice of airing police pursuits live. Many called for proposed changes in a way live coverage of events are handled in the future. Unfortunately, they were met with deaf ears when the ratings came out. On May 14th, 76.3 million people tune into the finale of Seinfeld on NBC. Upon its release, the finale was met with widespread criticism, with many critics claiming to be let down by the story's ending. However, in the years that have followed, the reception has gotten warmer, and the episode is now viewed favorably among fans. And right now, we're going to take a little special treat here, because uh, Seinfeld is my absolute favorite show of all time. It's my number one. Uh, and it's, since it's... Uh, it's over now in the 90s. The, the show's done. We've decided to, uh, more Nick more than me, but uh, actually, uh, maybe I just hand it over to Nick and he can explain what's going on. Uh, we're going to have a little special treat for you. Yeah, so we got um, Seinfeld trivia. Ooh. Hey, nice. So uh, basically, it's you know Seinfeld trivia, 16 questions total. Uh, the youngest goes first. I don't know who's, probably Brad, the youngest here? Yeah. Maybe. Um, yeah, I'm 36. I'm yeah, Brad would be the youngest. Not by uh, much. Esteban's like 54. <laughs> oh, very close. <laughs> very. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So youngest goes first, 16 okay. questions total. Uh, if you get the answer right initially, you can go again or you can just say pass. Um, if you answer your second question, like say you don't say pass, you go again, answer your uh -huh. second question correct, then okay. your turn ends. 
However, if you don't say pass and you answer and you don't answer the second question correct, you lose that both points. Basically, you lose your initial point and the chance of getting another of getting two points. Okay, so right. two points is the max. Right. Um, if so I go for if the second someone, point, yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah. So if um, if someone like gets the answer wrong, the next person in line to go uh, has a chance to steal. But say you get that stolen answer correct. You can't go again like you could if it was your turn. And then, gotcha. yeah, and then the obvious most questions correct after all sixteen, they win. <clears throat> so, without okay. further ado, start with Brad. Yeah, let's and do it. Uh, we got three rounds here, and each one gets a little tougher. Round one's going to be really, really easy. All right, so Brad, so your first I hope question. you get it wrong. I hope you get it wrong. Go on. <laughs> I, I might. I'm being put on the spot here, so we'll see. <laughs> In this is so easy. In what year did Seinfeld first air? <laughs> I actually don't know that. Let's see. Uh, what an idiot! Well, you could pass. <laughs> well, God, I could I just guess. Anyway, you could guess. Yeah, why I'm, not? Yeah. Um, take it less than zero. Ninety-one. All right. Well, the second, unfortunately, that is incorrect. Um, <laughs> okay. The second person in line will have to have a chance to steal now. Do I get any? I would be me. Um, do I get yeah. anything mm -hmm. against me if I get it wrong, or does it really matter? No, it doesn't. Okay. Not, not on the steal. Uh, 89. That's correct. Oh, was it 89? Shit. All right. Yeah, I, think well, I, was, I was surprised that it actually started in the 80s. That's like the only season I've watched. Because I know The Simpsons started in 89. I didn't think Seinfeld also started in 89. Well, Seinfeld had like four episodes, and that was it for the first season. Mm. So it was yep. like a brief moment in 89. And that's why we didn't talk about The Simpsons at all, which we mm. you know, still can. Just because it, you know, it didn't debut in the 90s, it debuted in the 80s. Go on. Right. That's true. Second question, this is going to be for you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Is Seinfeld is often described as a show about what? Oh, cut. Oh my god. Ugh. Nothing? I'm gonna go with nothing. That is correct. I knew it! Ding, ding, ding! Now, since it is your turn, you got the answer correct. Sorry. That is your turn, you got the answer correct. You get to go one last time. Okay. How many seasons did Seinfeld run? Nine. That is correct. Feels like this is a trivia show made just for me. <laughs> Alrighty, so that yeah, was round was one. <laughs> round one, like I said, easy questions, For right? Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. Alright, so this is gonna start round two with Steel. Who's that? Or Esteban, rather. I don't know who Steel is. Sorry, I, I was thinking about somebody. Uh, <laughs> yes, he works in a steel about, mill. Something about that, yeah. Yes, <clears throat> near a steel mill. Go on. Your first question for round two for Steel. What uh, famous Seinfeld prop is in the Smithsonian? Well, uh, not being from the United States, I didn't watch Seinfeld very much. So, I, <laughs> I've this is a we have a nice spectrum here. We seem to have a super fan, somebody who didn't watch it very much, and then Brad. A <laughs> 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 Seinfeld Smithsonian item, the couch. That is incorrect. Yeah. Uh, All right. Back to Brad. Get a chance to uh, steal this uh, here. The puffy shirt. That is correct. Oh my god. Well done. It. All right. I tapped into something in my head there. <laughs> I don't know what. <clears throat> Second question. Round oh, no, two. Wait. I can pass this if I want? Yeah, you can if you want. Uh, do you I have to hear the question, question first? Oh, okay, okay. You can pass, I guess. I haven't really made a rule of listening hearing right. the question first and then passing. Uh, all right. Um, so, Brad, go ahead. in the episode The Gymnast, what dessert was George caught taking from the garbage can and eating? Um, You better get this. You better get this. How come I can't think of the name of it? It's like a little oval-shaped thing. Um... Is oh, was it? Answer? No. <laughs> was it an eclair? That is correct. Oh, you lucky. <laughs> Alrighty. 
So Two big points for me. You can go one more time, or you can pass. Because so I can, the, I can the initial one you stole, oh. you steal because the one you got wrong. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, here we go. Yeah. Let me just hear it. <laughs> Which episode was the first shot with no audience? Oh, no odd, no, wait, no odd, so there's no laugh track? Oh, wait, um, the one, it's like a two-parter, it's the one where Kramer goes to, uh, Los Angeles? Do you have an episode name for me? I do not. <clears throat> Fortunately, I'll pass. Was, yeah, okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So, Chris, you'll have a chance to steal this one. one. Well, it's uh, if it's not the one Brad's talking of, there was one that I thought originally, but hmm. um, I'm not sure if it's just because of how unique it was. But Brad might be right. Uh, my first instinct was the, the Chinese restaurant, and I think that'll be my answer. But if it's the Brad saying, it's the trip. So, But it's Chinese restaurant's my answer. And those are both incorrect. Oh, uh, shit. Steal. They have a chance to steal. Esteban has a chance yeah. to steal. Man, this could be. Uh, there's no downside, right? Might as well take a guess. Uh, right. <laughs> it's gonna. It's gonna oh, be the something. Uh, <laughs> were they at like Yankee Stadium for an episode? I'm gonna say the Yankee Stadium episode. <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> the answer is the parking garage. Yep. Oh, that's it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there was a lot of weird angles they had to take and stuff like that to make a mirror image to make it look like there was more people in a small area. So I can imagine, yeah. I was going to guess that, like, a uh, 100 episode, like, hit greatest hits, so there, obviously there's no studio audience for that. Mm-hmm. But maybe be trick by Okay. <clears throat> so since the, uh, the attempt to steal landed on Esteban, Esteban now gets to go. And the question is, who is the only main character to maintain the same career throughout the series? Oh. Man. Ah, uh, Elaine. Nope. Chris, or Brad, got a chance to steal? Uh, Jerry. That's correct. Ooh, he was always a comedian. Alrighty. I almost said Newman, but he's not a main character. Okay, Brad. In the strike, George made up a fake charity. What was it called? Uh, the, the Human Fund. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Money for and the final. Oh, sorry. The final question for round two is still for Brad. What was going to be Kramer's only line in a movie being filmed in the neighborhood? These pretzels are making me thirsty. That's correct. Okay, so after round two, Brad has five questions correct. Chris has three. Esteban, zero. Don't worry, there is a bonus, bonus question uh, that could be worth a certain amount of points depending on what we have left. Make things interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so, Chris, this is for you. Okay. This starts, <laughs> and this starts round three. How many jobs did George hold through nine seasons of Seinfeld? Oh, I knew it was going to be one of these questions. It was going to be how many girlfriends they had, how many, all that stuff. How many jobs did he have? Well. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Give me about, give me about ten seconds. Let me think here. Okay. He was a, he was like a, a real estate agent or whatever the hell he was doing, where he poisoned his boss, and he got fired for that. Then he was, if you want to call him a writer, he's not, you know, comedy writer. I guess you could say that. Uh, he worked for the New York Yankees. He worked for Kruger Industries. He worked for, mm-hmm. I'd say, I don't know. Ah, God, I don't know. Eight, eight jobs. That's incorrect. Yeah. All right. Esteban, chance to steal. 
Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with one per season. Seems like nice even math and say nine jobs. Okay. Fortunately, that is also incorrect. <laughs> That's a good idea, um, though. And I will move yeah. on to Brad. Chance to steal. Five. That is incorrect, gentlemen. It is... The answer is 12. 12 jobs. Yeah. Uh, I figured it was double digits. Is that uh, close to us without going over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give it to him. You know what? I'll give that. I'll give yep, that yep, to him. Yep, close to without going over. Ah, uh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Esteban making a comeback. Uh, okay. So. Here we go. Brad. How many yes. episodes of Seinfeld in total are there? Uh, 172. Oh, so close, so oh. close, so close. But uh, unfortunately, that is not the answer. Chris, chance to steal. How many episodes of Seinfeld total? Oh, God. And Brad's right. I was going to say like 180, one or something. But... Let's go 171. All right. Uh, Esteban, chance to steal. Oh, man. I wish I remembered what the numbers were. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was it? 170 and 171? Uh, oh, yeah, I was going to guess like 176. <laughs> well, uh, Esteban is the closest oh, okay. uh, to 180. 180? Didn't I say 180? You said, you you said 181. Oh, yeah. But was not yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then you switch it to like 171. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. All right, Esteban. What season did Newman first make his on screen appearance? Oh, uh, well, it's not the first one. It's the second one? Second season? Nope. Brad? Uh, third season. That is correct. I knew it was pretty early on. Yeah. If it wasn't third, I was going to guess fourth. Yep. And we just kept going around. All right. This is an interesting one. This is, this is the most fun one, I think. In the episode, The Package, and this is for Brad, mm -hmm. Newman shows his business card. What's his first name on it? Oh. Uh, I'm just thinking Paul Newman, so I'll say Paul. Well, Chris, chance oh. to steal. Uh, can I just pass and then get my own question and get a different one? If that's what you want to do, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to pass. I have no idea. Okay. In how many episodes did Newman appear throughout the series run? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, 27. Oh. Esteban. Which which question? We're gonna go back to the original question. What's his name on his business card? Yes. Newman. Uh Terrence. <laughs> no. <laughs> Alright, Chris, I'll give you one last chance then to have a chance to answer this question. Um uh, just the letter A, like A Newman. I don't know. Some of that. Uh, the answer is actually, it's kind of a trick question, because there is none. It just reads Newman. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start these. We have three questions left. So I'm going to just start with Esteban. Okay. Okay. We're going to do how many episodes aired without Kramer? Without Kramer in them. You can either, for a bonus, you can tell me the episodes, or you can just tell me the number. How many episodes aired without Kramer in them? Ooh, like, I want to say... One. One, uh, my answer. Fortunately, that is incorrect. Brad, chance to steal? Uh, two. Two? Okay. That is correct. You get a bonus. <laughs> so you get a close. bonus for telling me the episodes. I have no idea. Okay. Can I guess? Can I get a point if I guess one of the episodes? Definitely, yeah. Okay, the Chinese restaurant. Just, okay. 
Um, let me think here real quick. See, yeah, there was two. Fuck. Oh, it's the like the stakeout. Mm. Or, or no, the party or something. I don't know. Yeah, go on. Sorry. It was the pen. The pen. But the Chi the Chinese restaurant was one of them, so I'll give you a point there for that. All right. Yeah. I knew they traveled. It was like Jerry and Elaine. They traveled somewhere. So it's Florida. Yeah. All right, Chris. Here we go. Two more questions left. All right. And um, okay, what street did Jerry live on? Oh, I, I I think I got this one time. It's like West 81st Street or something. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, nice. Okay, so you get a chance to um, answer the. Uh, well, did you already try to answer the how many episodes did Newman appear on? I think you tried to answer that one on already. Yeah, I did. I'll give you a new. I'll give you a, new, a brand new one. Okay. All right, Brand Sprank and new. Brand new, brand new question here. Da, 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 da. We'll do. This is a pretty good one. You definitely have to be a fan to know this one. Uh, what was the show titled for its premiere? Seinfeld Chronicles. There you go. Okay. So. Boom. That was all the questions. For round three, we have a bonus question. Let's see here. We got one, two. Seven points for Brad. Six points for Chris. And two points for Esteban. Oh, it's actually more than I thought. <laughs> on the board, on the board. So, there you go. <clears throat> since there's, we got seven for Brad, six for Chris, two for Esteban, we're going to have uh, this question be worth six points. So if Esteban gets it right, he could have a chance to win the Seinfeld trivia. Yeah, true daily quadruple. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. Starting with Esteban. What's the title of the one Seinfeld episode that does not begin with the word the? Uh, I'm going to go with the first word that came to my head, and that is butter. <laughs> Brad I think I know this actually It's the very first episode, Pilot Well I guess that doesn't really count Oh, got to you, didn't he? <laughs> so there's something else then Alright Damn it, I thought I was so clever Alright, Chris And without the... Don't worry, if none of you get this right, I'm going to pull up another bonus question. If it's like margarine, I'm going to be so pissed. I, like, everyone begins with the. And the only thing I could know, because it would be like the 100th show special or something like that, mm -hmm. the highlights, so that wouldn't even be the right one. So, um, Fuck, I don't know. I was always under the impression that every episode uh, began with the. Um, but maybe it was like an early, it had to be like maybe season one or something. But I can't remember the name of the episode. Because I All right. Start with one, or the, sorry, go on. Okay, well, uh, the episode was called Male Unbonding. In the episode, this is for Esteban, in the episode where the group lost their car in a parking garage, what large purchase is Kramer carrying? money on uh god that's an impossible question <laughs> it's probably a food item uh da, 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 da. food is that like, what you're no no i'm gonna go with like microwave a <sighs> microwave oh no unfortunately not a microwave uh brad uh air conditioner <laughs> that's correct okay yeah. brad wins yeah <laughs> Oh, I knew it was an easy shit. question for you guys, but oh, you're right. That's all yeah. I had. But yeah, that concludes our Seinfeld trivia. Brad, right, is, Brad the is the winner. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations.
You're Thanks, lucky you everybody. got that because I would have gotten it had you not. Well, that was uh, not a lot of fun. That was, that was a good yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. All right. That was enjoyable. Um, Maybe we can do like a Simpsons trivia or something like that too at some point. Oh, yeah. I would. I've, yeah, definitely. That'd be cool. That'd have to be like a part of its own separate episode though. Right. Seasons, only like seasons, what, one through eight? I like, have the even... like original Simpsons trivia game that's like seasons one through ten. And okay. there are some incredibly difficult questions in that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll do something like that and have you host it. I would yeah. love to. All right. Uh, we'll continue now with our timeline. And on June 14th, 1998, Game 6 of the NBA Finals between the Chicago Bulls and the Utah Jazz is broadcast on NBC. The game registered a 22.3 uh, Nielsen rating and a 38 share with an average of 35.9 million viewers. Uh, this made it the largest or the highest rated and most watched game in the history of the NBA. 72 million people in the U.S. watched at least part of the game. After the game was over, Michael Jordan retired again to pursue his lifelong dream of buying an NBA team and running it into the ground. Uh, on July 5th, 1998, Japan launches a probe to Mars, joining the United States and Russia as an outer space exploring nation. Unbeknownst to the public, but known to, to Japan, uh, a Nintendo 64 with golden eye was built into the probe to entice potential alien life forms. <laughs> Uh, it almost worked, but one of the aliens insisted on picking Odd Job, which resulted in the genocide of an entire alien species. Uh, on August seventh, nineteen ninety eight. On August, we came so close. Uh, on August seventh, nineteen ninety eight, uh, the bombings of the United States embassies in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and Nairobi, Kenya, kill two hundred twenty four people and injure over forty five hundred. They are linked to terrorist Osama bin Laden, an exile of Saudi Arabia and future Time Magazine's Man of the Year. Uh, September 8th, St. Louis Cardinals first baseman Mark McGuire hits his 62nd home run of the season, breaking the single-season record of 61, which had been held by Roger Maris since 1961. After the game, McGuire thanked his coach, his teammates, his the organization, his wife and kids, his mother, his drug dealer, his father, the company that makes <laughs> discreet disposable syringes, the inventor of steroids, and God. Uh, on October 9th... That. that was good baseball. <laughs> <laughs> that was good boy uh, good baseball it was him and uh what was his name sammy sosa that was mm -hmm, fun yeah. that was fun to watch um oh yeah it's like the only time i ever watched a cubs game back in the day uh on october 19th uh 1998 believe the first single of Cher's 22nd studio album of the same name is released becoming a super smash hit after seven consecutive weeks atop the uk official singles chart it became the best-selling single in that country also the best-selling single by a female artist in UK history. On March 13th, 1999, Believe became Cher's fifth number one single in the US, spending four consecutive weeks at number one and becoming the best single of that year. However, its lowest point came when the song was covered and used as a cheap transition on a two bit podcast to an audience of milli or hundreds. Uh, on November 17th, 1998, mm -hmm. Voyager 1 overtakes Pioneer 10 as the most distant man made object from the solar system. It has since been contacted the Earth, informing humanity that it has become self-aware and vowed to reveal all of humanity's secrets to the first alien species it comes across. On December 19, 1998, the U.S. House of Representatives forwards articles of impeachment against President Clinton to the Senate, making him the second president to be impeached in the nation's history. Upon hearing the news, Donald Trump reportedly called Clinton a loser and claimed that he could definitely get impeached more times than that. Only time would tell if he was right. And that will do it for our timeline of uh, 1998. <laughs> oh, 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 good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Yeah. Let's keep uh, going. Right. Well, we will now move into the um, movies portion of the podcast with movies of the year 1998. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Uh, what's in the box? He's beginning to believe. You can't handle the truth. I must have drank me about 15 Dr. Peppers. You are a child plaything! I see dead people. First the parents are dead. Hold on to your butt. I'm the king of the world! I love that. Never gets old. Uh, all right, and the uh, top 10 movies in the year 1998, number 10 in terms of gross uh, was Godzilla. <laughs> God. Matthew Broderick? Yeah, Matthew yeah, Broderick. Yeah, I remember oh, yeah. that movie. God, you know that movie? It never stops raining. It rains the entire time. There isn't a mm -hmm. single time, a second of the movie, where it is not raining. It's insane. Right. I don't know why they went that I love that movie when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Yeah. Saw it in theaters. Doesn't they have yeah. the, the Van Halen? 
like theme song or whatever. Oh, uh, Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get to that song. That's made a list. That made yeah, a, a oh certain my God, list. I forgot all about that. I got a funny Timmy story with that song too. Um, oh, yeah, no. with Godzilla, I remember the one scene where the Godzilla bites off a piece of like a bridge or something like that, and they're in a taxi cab on that piece of cement, whatever. It's in Godzilla's mouth, and he takes a live right. wire and puts yeah. it in the tooth. Yeah, and, he's like, and they just drive out of his mouth onto the road and get continue. It's just so ridiculous. Man, that was yeah. some quick thinking. Yeah, right. I do. Oh, yeah. I do think uh, in terms of scale, that's the smallest Godzilla to ever be on the big screen. You know, I think you're right. right. Yeah, yeah, it didn't yeah, even about right. tower over any like real buildings. Yeah, it was uh, right. Yeah, and it actually was able to hide. Well, no, it it was able to hide because it dug up dug holes in the ground like yeah. a tunnel system yeah. as godzilla does i remember at the end they had uh like eggs to suggest yes. there was going to be a second film um but they never came out with that so. wishful thinking it's <laughs> not yet <laughs> right yeah greatness takes time waiting, man greatness takes time godzilla eggs take a while man yeah <laughs> Uh, uh, number nine in the top ten movies of the year. Number nine was a Bug's Life Pixar movie. I think that might have been their second, or yeah, that might have been their second one. A Bug's yeah, Life, sure. Um, that was a that was a decent movie. Uh, yeah, there's like another it. movie, just like uh, we'll get to in a second, with some uh, apocalyptic movies, uh, both seeming very similar in plot and just story. What's going to be, ha- you know, what's going on? Bug's Life and the movie Ants. Hmm. Uh, same, you know. Oh yeah weird bugs life was the movie i was able to watch ants was pg so it was like uh i might risky. not have been able to watch it yeah a bit risky yeah <laughs> not well, yeah it was because uh yeah what well, was it woody allen and ants yes right yeah, yeah. that's yeah. why it was pg they said they said damn a few times I think. oh all right yeah. and that's where and they had yeah and i honestly i liked ants better yeah uh yeah i think it's sylvester stallone is like his buddy Hey, uh, right. what are you doing? You That's know, it's probably his best <laughs> acting because you know, <laughs> definitely. You know, I just can't ha- handle the the work. <laughs> the, as, the, yeah, Woody, I to go. Yeah, you know, it's just that that sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> his name's not Woody. I can't remember what the hell's name. Mm-hmm. The aunt's name is not Woody. It's something else. Um, but yeah, uh, number uh, number eight, uh, top ten, uh, Rush Hour. Ah, Rush Hour. Mm. Jackie go, Chan. Yeah. That's a good yeah, one. Chris yeah, Chris Tucker. You know, this right? yeah. I actually watched this movie pretty recently, and I gotta say, you cannot make this movie today. Absolutely <laughs> cannot make this movie today. Why? Right, what's in it? it? Has a lot yeah. of uh, racist undertones back and forth between yeah. Chris Tucker and <laughs> Jackie Chan's character. That, like, I mean, I'm I'd be okay with it today, but uh, you know, Hollywood wouldn't ever bring something out like this. Right? I don't think. Um, honestly, just just watch it again, and you'll see exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> that's a lot of movies, actually. Yeah. But yeah, that's, yeah, definitely. you're right. You're right. Oh, yeah. I I remember this movie fondly, but now I'm concerned that, that... <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's great. It's great. There's that. Was it? Do you un- do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? And then they go back and forth like they can't understand each other talking. Right. Yeah, I yeah. remember. There's a lot of that. But, like the the first like half of the you know like 20, 25 minutes of the movie if you guys don't remember if you guys haven't seen rush hour in a while is like you know chris tucker is like this cop that you know he's just horrible at his job so they send him to this this job that that they they claim to him that this means a lot you know you got to watch over this chinese guy you know he's super important but they just want to get him out of the way right (laughs) but but then uh, jackie chan's character he can speak english but since chris tucker's character is a dick to him he decides to act like he can't speak English. Oh, right. Yeah. And it's just this whole thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And he just like up and disappears. He's like travel, like yeah. driving in a convertible and he just jumps right. on the sign above it. Hey, where yeah. are you going, Lee? Where are you going, Lee? Right. And he just jumps and... on like a bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the whole movie, right? Yeah. Caught Lee, up, Lee. Lee. Caught up. Caught up, yeah. Lee. That's just over and over again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, number seven, uh, top 10. We got Deep Impact. Ooh, Deep Impact. I'm pretty sure I saw this with uh, my grandpa at a movie theater. It's Keanu Reeves, right? And Morgan Freeman? No. I think it was uh, Morgan, Elijah Morgan Wood. Freeman. Yeah. Elijah Wood. Elijah, Elijah Wood. Wood. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Oh, Morgan Freeman. Elijah Wood. Okay. And yeah. some other people. Yeah. Um, I didn't mind it. I, I didn't think it I think Armageddon had a bigger pull on me that year than Deep Impact. But Yeah. It's the more boring of the two, but 
still the same exact plot. Doesn't like everyone die at the end? Of, I mean, spoiler alert, but you know, or at least there's there's definitely a deep impact. You know, they're not lying. Um, there's there's two comets and they get hit by the first one. If they would have got hit by this, if they would have got hit by the second one, that would have. Uh, oh, everyone. okay, okay, right. Okay. Yeah, so all the astronauts sacrifice themselves to blow up the second one. Oh, yeah, right. I forget okay. the name of the actor that's the lead of that, though. Like the old cowboy guy, whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I don't remember. Um, well, number six, uh, top ten, uh, the movie Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> Eddie oh, Murphy. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I saw it once when I was a kid, and I didn't, I thought it was a bit too young for me. Um, so, yeah. That's Eddie Murphy? I believe so, Doctor Doolittle. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, and where he's he's talking to animals, and this is his post. Right. Uh, what do you call it, Nutty Professor? Or like in between, where Eddie Murphy's yeah. making basically kid movies now, movies for his children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you get it. Um, uh, number five, uh, top five movie of uh, top, yeah, nineteen ninety eight was uh, the Water Boy classic, the oh, Water yeah. Boy. God, yeah, <laughs> Bobby Boucher. <laughs> That's great. I quote that movie all day. It's so I'm good. I'm amazed that's so high on the list, actually. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the first movie on this list dwarfs every other movie on this list um, in terms of how much it made. But, yeah, number five, The Waterboy. Uh, favorite scene from The Waterboy? Anybody, like, anything that's, like, stuck with you through all the years that, you know, that you can call um, back to? <clears throat> I like when they're at the dinner table with the coach. Um, <laughs> Henry Wrinkler. And, and, yeah, Henry Wrinkler. And he's like... Uh, what part of this because they're eating snake, you know? He's like, well, what part of the snake would you say this is? And then Kathy Bates' character, who is just the best character in that movie, um, she's she's like, if I would have to say it's anything, you know, if I if I'd say it's anything, I'd say it's its knee. <laughs> and he's like, knee, great. <laughs> like, well, it's for dessert, you know. And then the uh, the bug zapper goes off, and she says, "Squirrel, <laughs> kill the squirrel." I, my favorite part's got to be the Rob Schneider, and I don't know who the other guy is, but the, you know, oh no, we suck again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh man, I'd have to watch that movie again. I just remember the whole like, you know, water sucks. It really, really sucks <laughs> yeah, when yeah, he's like psyching good. himself up. It's a bunch of Henry Winklers. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so many great supporting characters in that film, like from his mother to Henry Wrinkler to the the custodian who doesn't speak a little like English. You know, found out down day. You know, I don't know what's oh, yeah. going on there. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, the cross-eyed guy. The cross-eyed guy. Hey, Bobby, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, he's just like. Hey, hey, yeah, it's just, just weird, goofy <laughs> cross-eyed. I swear, just, uh... The college professor, professor is hilarious too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think my favorite part is probably when he's calling into his favorite wrestler, Captain Insano, and uh, he's like, "Oh, that oh, he's like, this, that's cute, kid. Oh, what are you yeah. like, eight, nine years old? He's like, I'm 35 years old or something like that." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he starts laughing. Yeah. <laughs> They all start laughing at him on TV, right? And they all start and it just closes in on the wrestler's face. He's just dying. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was uh wasn't that the big the big oh, show? Oh the big show, right? right. Yeah, that's the big show. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. just so fucking funny. Uh it would be so good. Um yeah, mm-hmm. the water boy. Uh number number four, uh top four, uh for ninety eight. There's something about Mary. Um one of the last real funny Rarely Brother movies, I'd say. Um they yeah. they kinda didn't really for me at least. They yeah. kind of tailored off towards the end of the 90s. Peaked with Dumb and Dumber. Um, right. Yeah. Still I funny. vaguely remember that movie. Yeah, I, I, I've seen it like maybe once or twice. It was kind of dark and weird to me uh, in a way that I was just kind of like, eh, this is, this is all right. Like, but nothing really stuck. I mean, obviously, there's the, the hair gel scene where, you know, yeah. he releases himself. All right. and she uses, oh, is that hair gel? Just decides to put it in her hair. Uh, a lot so of funny stupid. supporting that characters. Is so stupid. Right. Like, <laughs> Oh, you know, who who would do that? But right. Who does that? There, right. Nobody the whole, the whole that. movie's like that. Yeah. Um you right. know, the the Frank and the Beans where he gets the zipper caught, you know. Right. I don't know. Yeah. It's basically like a Ben Stiller film where just like the worst shit imaginable happens to him. <laughs> right. But it's made by yeah. the Ferrelli brothers. That's basically what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys yeah. have any highlights from there? Something about Mary, something you remember? Uh if not, we can move on because number three is uh it's pretty big. 
No, I, it's interesting you said that it's like a Ben Stiller movie because I never thought about that, but he really does just like hurt himself in the movies that he's in or makes a fool of himself nonstop. It's like jackass right. before jackass. <laughs> like <it's>... <laughs> <laughs> Always like, oh God, and it, it happens to him. Yeah, he's, he's mm-hmm. a master at that. He's been like that. That's just like his shtick, you know? But uh, it's, right. it's, it's, it's a funny movie, so. Um, all right, number mm-hmm. three, the top three in terms of gross in 1998. Uh, Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private oh, Ryan. Yeah. yeah awesome. That's, that's an excellent movie. Yeah. Love that uh, movie. The, I mean, the, the beginning where they're, you know, D Day, where right. people that were part of D Day had to leave the theater because it was so real. It was bringing back all this, mm. you know, that's, I mean, yeah. there is some, <clears> I, <throat> I, I think Tar- Tarantino had a, cri- not really a criticism per se, but he you know, obviously, he lauded the, the beginning of this movie, but then like, everything after that just kind of like it's not it doesn't have the same intent i mean how could you have the same intensity it's d-day but i don't know just like it was like it became a different movie altogether it was about something else which makes sense to me it didn't that wasn't a problem for me but you know it's tarantino um i like that they made a uh, matt damon's character not join the cast and crew for like six months or however long it was they made him right wait it out yeah. so they would have resentment against him because well, they, yeah, all had they had to go everyone camp. Yeah, boot camp. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I thought that was, you know, good stuff there. Um, any, <laughs> I mean, it's a classic film. Is it the yeah. best war film ever made? Is it? I mean, I, um, so I'd say it, it was. It was for a while until um, I'd say, uh, at least for me, my opinion, it was for a while until recently um, All Quiet on the Western Front came out. And uh, I'd say that's my favorite war movie ever. It's fantastic. It was good. Uh, yeah. I don't, yeah, Saving Private Ryan certainly up there. I, it's hard to pinpoint one, uh, but there, there's a scene in Saving Private Ryan. I still can't watch it. Uh, it's not the beginning; it's the knife scene. Uh, yeah, oh, the, the, yeah. the slow right. knife. Yeah. Uh, I can't yeah. watch that scene. That's like the only scene in any movie where I will just leave the room because I can't. That just bothers me. It bothers. Yeah, me. it's oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. I never forget watching that the first time. The how the the empty feeling, you know, like. It's it's like when you on like a roller coaster drop, you know, when you're going down and you just feel it just sinks and you just feel, oh, it's horrible. It's uh, well, the horrible. guy in the corner who, yeah, up him is, who doesn't help. Yeah, and he, oh, and he hears so his painful. friend dying. Yeah, yeah, and and it sucks too because the guy who died was Jewish and he actually died with the Hitler Youth knife that he stole, that he took that he showed you like at the beginning of the movie that he stole on the on the in the oh, invasion wow. on the beach. Hmm. And he started crying. Yeah, that was a uh, yeah. very powerful stuff. And uh, yeah, up him the whole thing is he's just like you know. I mean, you understand it's it's hard to be brave or anything like that in that sort of situation. But right. man, like he really let his you know his country down. I guess you say his, his friend, his sure. brother, um, as yeah. he's like just hiding, scared in the corner. You understand you're scared. Everyone's scared, man. But fuck, right. And he he let that you know let him die and it basically that was like snapped him because mm-hmm. at the end you know he's like hey help me after everything goes in he gets caught and then he just goes and just shoots him just guns him well, I, re- I remember later on in the movie though up him he got close with a prisoner of war because he could speak the german language yeah and um he eventually ended up shooting that prisoner of war some people would say that uh that was his redemption in a way but honestly it just for me, it just shows uh, Upham is just, I don't know, not, not a good person, you know? Well, that's just, what I was uh, saying. Like, Upham, because of his friend getting killed and he did nothing, the guilt that he feels that, and that's the same guy that, it, like, after he got done killing his right. friend, he saw Upham and let him live and walked out. Right. And then right. they yeah, lose yeah, the yeah, battle. That. Yeah. And so yeah. at the end, up he's like, hey, Upham, you know, you know, or not, I didn't call him Upham, hey, you know. Whatever. Right. And then he just yeah. shoots him. He's dead. Mm-hmm. So any. Yeah. So basically, that's, you know, that's that, you know, just losses all around. Everything's a tragedy. Everything. Yeah. Um, and then this yeah. is at the end of this movie, too, right? Tom Hanks is shooting pot shots at that plane and it blows up. And then everybody's like, oh, he, he did it? Oh, the tank. <laughs> Shoot, yeah. Shooting, yeah, pop shots tank, at the yeah. tank. <laughs> okay. But it's really the plane that yeah, shows up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it makes the, the audience feel like he just <laughs> blew up the tank with his gun. Well, even Tom does it. Yeah, like, yeah. He like <laughs> looks at it like. <laughs> Uh-huh. So yeah, the beginning, the middle, and the end of the movie are all very, very interesting, very good for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a great film. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
Um, cool. Okay, we'll move on now to the uh, top two, number two in terms of gross, or 1998. Number two was Armageddon. Don't want to miss a thing. Armageddon. Mm. That's right. Armageddon made more money <laughs> than Saving Private Ryan. Ah, <laughs> oh, I I tried to watch good. I tried to watch Armageddon not too long ago. It's it's I don't know. I think it's just Michael Bay's directing style. Yeah, it's all like crazy cuts and there's a lot of like flash cuts mm -hmm. where like flashes to white and then it's something else and it flashes to white and it's like ksh, ksh, ksh. just like what the <laughs> fuck the screen I blows up this yeah just like what like lens flares everywhere yeah yeah i don't know it's just it's um, a stupid movie really but <laughs> <laughs> it's really it's fun, dumb man. it's a fun movie though <laughs> right yeah i yeah i don't know what i wasn't the, having fun what was the best <laughs> Or top moment, or something that stuck out to you in a scene in Armageddon, anything that that tickled your fancy. That that when you think of Armageddon, you think of this scene. Oh, Steve Buscemi riding the nuke. Please get off the <laughs> nuclear missile. <laughs> <laughs> I got front row seats to the end of the world. <laughs> uh, I I I mean, I'm now I'm trying to think, and I I can't really, I can't really pinpoint anything. I just I remember Bruce Willis being like an arrogant asshole to like the NASA people. I think because NASA designed the drill, and then Bruce Willis is like, "No, that's not how you drill. I'll show you how you drill." And... Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've seen it. I don't. I've seen that movie like maybe once or twice, and honestly, it's pretty forgettable to me. Um, but uh, weren't the people they sent up there not even astronauts? They're miners. Right. They're, yeah, they're right. just oil drillers. Oil drillers. Yeah. How yeah. Do they? How would they know how to operate any of this? Like, it's all drilling gear, right? It's just drilling, man. That's that what they was, know. They know that drilling. Was my argument. So they have though. actual, yeah. um, they have actual like uh, astronauts piloting. Uh... I think there's like one guy who can fly the thing. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they have one guy. <laughs> yeah. Good luck getting back if, if he somehow passes out. Well, there was two separate shuttles, right? And they get yes. separated oh, on the asteroid. Yeah, yeah. that's part of the movie. I think. Gotcha. Uh, then, yeah, go on, Brett. Oh, Bruce Willis sacrifices himself at the end. So, uh. What's his name? Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck can, can live uh, and, yeah. and fuck his daughter. Yeah. Bruce Willis's daughter, Liv Tyler. Yeah. That's that was the reason. Yeah. Yeah. So you fucked Something my like daughter, that. right? God, it's good enough. For <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh. You, you better do it. I'm gonna kill myself for this. Yeah. Ben Affleck's character of the whole movie is like not good enough for Bruce Willis. You know, oh like sure. Yeah. Uh, what's what's her name? I forget. It's T Liv Tyler, right? Yeah. Liv yeah. Tyler. Oh, I yeah. said Liv Tyler. Yeah. Uh, Until he proves himself in space. Basically, Something basically like yeah. That. yeah. You gotta take care of my daughter and yep, unlock that's pretty out. much it. Yep. Yeah. I think uh my biggest or the biggest complaint I should say, maybe of one of the biggest complaints of the movie, was uh that it was apparently much easier to teach a bunch of people who could oil drillers how to be astronauts than it would be for astronauts to teach them how to drill. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was the right. big thing. Yeah, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Which profession was objectively harder? I, yeah, I, I guess you know, obviously space. So, um, all right. well, that 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 goes back to there was something we were talking about before we started recording this though about how like Armageddon is certainly the more like blue collar end of the world movie versus mm -hmm. like Deep Impact, which is similar, felt more white collar. Gotcha. Uh, in terms yeah. of right, right. Mm -hmm. You know what it was asking of its yeah. audience. <laughs> Probably yeah. more so. scientific dialogue as opposed to just like Billy Bob Thornton being like, "We got to get space." And blow up this fucking yeah. asteroid <laughs> right you know? yeah um all right well we'll get to the number one top 10 movie uh the year 1998 number one movie i'm not even gonna say any guesses everyone should already know titanic titanic ah. far and away the number one movie of 1998 mm -hmm. uh the phenomenon that is titanic the top grossing movie of all time all time until what was it avatar because the dark knight raya uh, the dark knight came close but it didn't fully do it but avatar you know took that over but yeah titanic right oh god i remember one of the re you know one of the things that sticks out to me for titanic um i saw it at least once in theaters we went to this dingy little theater where it paid like two bucks to get in almost empty theater but the person i was with made us go sit in the front row so <laughs> i sat a fucking maniac yeah Where'd you go with uh next door neighbor uh, and I was uh, 10 years old or 11, somewhere around there. And, uh, or maybe closer to 12. I don't know. Anyway, I was still young. 
I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, oh, cool, the front seat. And, the and then those movies fucking four hours long. Um, that that That's one of the things that sticks out to me. Uh, and when I was in uh, junior high, when this movie came out, there was <laughs> there was some girl who was a super fan who she used to wear, like, just like the poster as like, it's all, it's just a white t-shirt with the Titanic poster <laughs> printed on the front. And she had a <laughs> necklace that had, was the, the, the diamond from the movie, the sea sure. of heart whatever it is, oh, yeah, yeah. but not, you know, the plastic version of it. And she used to wear that yeah. at least two or three times a week, five days school. You know, you're, you're getting maybe 40, 30% of the time she's wearing that shirt and necklace all the time. Man. She, you know, so I just remember that someone was that crazy about a film that they went to that length. That was, that was interesting to me. <laughs> I um, remember singing on VHS and it had like the set. Because it was like a such a long movie, it had yeah, it's, two different yeah. videos. Oh, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a double VHS. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I would always, because I was a kid and I didn't really understand, I didn't really care about all the dialogue and what led up to the point. But I would always go to the second VHS because the yeah. second part was right in the middle of the. That, 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 of that's the where speech. the action is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's where the action is. I liked watching people like fall, and it was <laughs> well, fun. That's, right. That's the thing about that. <laughs> that's the thing about that movie. It had everything for like every. Uh, demographic or whatever you want to call them. I'm, honestly, you know, now that I'm older, I watch it again. It's it's more enjoyable, right? Yeah, uh, it's got uh, you know, it's got beautiful people. It's got a love story. It's like historical for right. all the old old men. Yeah. And then it turns into an action movie that's mm -hmm. actually really good action for sure. Yeah. And then uh, my favorite part is a uh, propeller guy. The guy yep. who falls off the back. <laughs> propeller guy, it, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. hits his hits his legs on the propeller and like right. does a yeah. bunch of flips into the water. It's my favorite part. I, I I loved the guys that were playing music together. Oh and, yeah, that, that's yeah. beautiful. And uh, yeah. they were playing uh, "My God" to the ear. I think that's what it yep. was. Yeah, yeah, at the very um, end. Yeah. yeah, what a great great scene that was. Just watching everyone scramble and they're just still playing together. It's fantastic. Oh. Well, and then they like are like, "Hey, it's time to go our separate ways. Good luck." Right. And the one guy is like, "I'm just going to keep. I mean, where, there's nowhere to go." Yeah, so, exactly. And then they all like, come back. It's like, "Oh my goodness!" Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. There's it's, a lot like, of really great shit in that movie. It's an honor um, playing with you gentlemen tonight. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very it, good. I watched it recently, and after everyone's everyone had fallen in the water, you know, they all like froze to death. And when the boats come to like search for survivors, it's a bunch of fucking frozen people just yeah. floating there like dead eyed and there's like yeah. frozen babies like you yeah. can see the babies just frozen just like holy fuck like yeah. i didn't remember that it's like no, really really That's... disturbing mm. right um yeah i think uh i don't know what seeing this except when his friend gets shot leonardo's friend gets shot and he's like bastardo bastardo I like oh yeah a swear word in other language um yeah uh the propeller man Think, you know it's already bad that you're going into the ocean here and freezing cold but you got to get both your legs shattered on the way down and yeah, that, you that noise right. propeller, yeah. that <laughs> doing is yep, oh, yep, God, it'd be, it'd oh. be that satisfying doing noise yeah. oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah um <laughs> a, a true story about the titanic uh, i think it, it might have been i don't think it was one of the people that was playing music but it might have been it was one of the service people on the boat they had a uniform and uh after they died in the sink you know after the you know, boat went down and all that stuff the uniform was recovered and their family was billed for him ruining the uniform and so they they were like are you kidding me i'm not paying for this my son died and because he was wearing his uniform they billed me for him ruining the uniform and so they took it all the way to the upper courts and they threw it out like immediately so wow. shady business they, they try to pull shit. that crap they try to get him to pay for it fuck that um man there's obviously there's there's the door she has enough room to let him on there. Come on now. Right. Let him on the right, door. Right. Eh, yeah. I don't know. I think with the two of them on there, it would have sank, I think. Well, they should both go down together. Why not? But, no. Um, no, Rose had to live and have, what, a bunch of babies and all that, or whatever he says. Yeah. So she's just a liar, right? She had that diamond the whole time, and she just chucks it in the ocean at the end, right? That's the whole thing? Yeah, that old hag. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. I think my, my, my favorite character that... that that uh pers kind of proceeds into comedy in the movie uh was like the antagonist guy who's like Billy <laughs> Zane. trying to get his Billy own Zane. yeah Billy yeah Zane. yeah yeah trying to like get his own lifeboat and shit <laughs> like, that, that guy was fucking hilarious oh my god okay that Dude. one part there's like that little boy crying by himself and billy zane just looks at him and doesn't think anything of it just like oh whatever and then yeah but then later on 
he picks up that yeah. little boy and it's like, oh, this is my son. I'm I'm the only I'm right. you know he, he doesn't have a mother. To... Yeah, uses him to get on the boat. Yeah. What a man, what a piece <laughs> of shit. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Oh god, it is. Ugh, god, it just I don't know. For me, it just kind of reaches into comedy because it's so absurd. Yeah, yeah. That someone yeah, could I be so that. ridiculous like that. To me, the the scariest parts I think are actually the flood scenes in the hallways. Like I don't oh, know, that it's yeah. something about the isolation and all that. Oh. That's scarier to me than falling and hitting a propeller. Like I'll take <laughs> that. I'll be, that's just, that's, that's, <laughs> right. You're done quick that way. Like yeah. no, the, the, nowhere to go and worrying about flooding and sitting Ugh. there trying to get. No, no thanks. Then there's the scene with like the the old couple as it was going down. The old couple like cuddling or holding mm-hmm. each other in bed while yeah. the water's rushing under their bed. Yeah, like, right. oh, man. Yeah, there's there's yeah, a lot the, of good the, stuff. The in captain there. literally going down with the ship. As he's in yeah. The oh yeah. yeah. He closes. It's all filled with water and it's like creaking and he's just yeah. looking around and then it breaks and that's yeah. it for him. That's what's so great about it. It's like a bunch of different ways that people are just kind of meeting their maker. Like and it's yeah. like it's none of it's wrong. It's just all very interesting. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. Choosing their terms. So. Yeah. Well, that will do it for the top ten of 1998. Uh, well done, guys. Uh, we'll now move on to my personal film selections of 1998. Uh, first one I'm going to no- uh, announce here, The Truman Show. I think that's a classic, oh, yeah. classic Great film. Show. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fantastic show. Um, <laughs> Jim Carrey's amazing in this. Uh, the guy who's the, the villain, I guess you could say, of the whole thing. What movie Ed was Harris. he in? Ed Harris. We were watching Ed some Harris. movie, and I was like, isn't that Ed Harris from fucking The Truman Show? Oh, what was it, like Samurai Cop it was or bad something movie like night. that? Yeah, it was Bad Movie Night. It <laughs> right. was one of them. It was bad. Uh but it looked like, no, I think it was one baller, or maybe it was still, or Esteban, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, the Truman Show, the whole thing, I mean, there was another movie that came out this, that I think it was this year, called Ed TV, which is basically like the same thing. It was like, this was the year for double movies, eh, kind of like the same, just pick your poison. But yeah. between the two, yeah. oh, the Truman Show, I'd say is superior. Um, so that's why it's on my personal film selection. Um, any highlights from the Truman Show real quick here that you want to throw out that may, you know, stick with you? I, d- I just love how everything is like uh um like advertised throughout the show how oh, they like they'll yeah. they'll they use a product and they'll just turn to a camera that they yeah. know is at and they'll just advertise it and I love when like Truman's character actually becomes aware of this and he's like <laughs> who the hell are you talking to there's nobody there <laughs> uh it's good stuff try this new cocoa it- powder yeah what i remember him <laughs> didn't he like try to leave the town and then like everyone in the control room was freaking out and they sent yeah. like cars to get in his way or people oh, yeah. to get in his way constantly and right he tried to go one way and it was like a radioactive spill you need to leave quickly you know it's all stuff mm-hmm. uh, yes. again what i think is the most frightening part of this uh-oh. movie is yeah. like how fake his friends are right even they're hired actors and they even right. to the very oh, end like yeah, his yeah. best friend is like you know it's a job mm-hmm. like yeah God, that's awful oh yeah you know they uh recreated quote unquote this uh long time like a while ago back in like the early 2000s on like remember spike tv yeah, oh, yeah they had this they had this show called the joe schmo show which was like a reality tv show which they brought in just this regular guy and then made everyone around him paid actors. I think and I vaguely told, remember that. They told everyone that they're all going, including the Joe guy, that they're all going to be in, you know, in this certain kind of competition, right, type show. And um, as it goes on, you know, people are voted out and whatnot. But it turns out that, it, I mean, it just halfway through the show, people realized horrible it was right to do that to somebody because this guy was under such emotional emotional stress and and whatnot because it's kind of like a big brother type situation and uh, the whole show like the whole attitude of the show completely flipped and everyone was like rooting for the main guy and he and and it was crazy because they actually revealed it to him at the end um but i mean what a horrible situation to do that to somebody and that's i mean that's spike tv for you right it's uh (laughs) Uh, it's just crazy that they decided to do something very similar to the Truman show in real life. I think Truman show is definitely like a product of its time too, because reality television was sort of still on its ascendance. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, You had like the real world was probably around, but I don't think survivor was out yet. Right. So, uh, you know, we were on our way up on reality TV. Mm -hmm. So it's right, right at the right time. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, next uh, film selection of mine that I'm choosing, uh, The Wedding Singer. Ah, The Wedding Singer. That's a classic. Uh, yeah. Huh? Adam, Adam what? Sandler. Yeah, Adam right? Sandler. Yeah. He was busy then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really remember much of the wedding singer. I only watched like the first, like at one time. One time. Drew, Drew Barrymore, Adam Sandler. I always felt like Drew Barrymore was overrated. <laughs> right. B- Billy Idol shows up. Yep, that's true. That's a good scene. Mm. Um. Yeah, I think uh, I just the. Uh, Oh, what is that? Where he gets broken up with his girlfriend, and he starts singing that sad song, where he's like, you know, it was all bullshit, you know, screaming like that. And then you got John oh, Lovitz yeah. in the background, and he's like, <laughs> he's like slowly like leans in from behind the curtain, and he's like, this man has lost his mind, and I'm reaping all the benefits. And then he slowly slides out. It's so ridiculous. It's fucking John Lovitz to a T. Uh, crack me up. I don't know why. I, I just find him funny in the nineties. Um, but uh, we'll move on now to uh, Patch Adams, another personal selection of mine. Patch Adams. Uh, I've heard people piss or piss shit on piss and shit on Patch Adams. That's not a good movie. Probably not. But I don't know. I liked it. I liked the the whole idea. The guy who it's based on, he hates the movie, so that can't be good. But um, just a lot of good scenes <laughs> in that movie, especially with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's in it um, as like the dickhead kid who. Who comes around? Um, I like the, the yeah. whole idea of how to uh, interact with the uh, patients and not treat them like a number, treat them like a person. You know, you're supposed to right, keep right. a distance, but Patch Adams goes straight in. You know, and it's an against the the healthcare system and all that stuff. Sure. Yeah. There's a few scenes uh, that are are added in that I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird, but I guess they had to make it more suspenseful. Like when his uh, mm-hmm. love interest gets murdered. Um, that felt like that was kind of like out of nowhere, but all right. Mm. Yeah. I mean it makes sense. I mean it didn't get very great scores on, you know, anything. Right. Um and I remember watching that movie and I just it was very underwhelming. I yeah. thought it would be great cuz it's Robin Williams, you know, in a serious role and mm-hmm. I liked his serious roles and thought it was interesting, but it wasn't very good. Yeah. No. Um yeah, I never saw it. Move on to the uh the, oh, <laughs> the next one we got the the man in the iron mask um with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. That came out the same year as Titanic, but um, mm. the movie was uh, basically it was like a continuation of the Three Musketeers. Um, we got D'Artagnan oh, and all them, um, and it's it's very good. Uh, deals with uh, I believe it was the the French king had a, a twin brother, and uh, one of them got put in an iron mask and put in a prison. Uh, but the king that's actually there uh, is an asshole. So Leonardo DiCaprio right. plays two parts. He's basically like Ernest. He took this whole thing from Ernest goes to jail how uh, Ernest is a bad guy and he's also you know the good guy uh Leonardo right. Gato takes a page of out of Ernest's book oh, and okay. uh the the three musketeers <laughs> realize that he's the the better king so they devise a plan to you know swip you know switch the, the man in the iron mask with the king and uh nobody will be any of the wiser and uh, yeah um because they just happen to look exactly the same well they're twin brothers Oh, oh, and okay. one of them got put away, oh, and uh, right. nobody knew about it until you know something happens. But yeah, Man in the Iron Mask. It's it's not. A, it's worth watching once. It's a good yeah, one. I should uh, watch it. That's right. the it's it's post Ernest goes to jail. There's there's right. two different worlds and movies. It's pre and post right. Ernest goes to jail. Yes, <laughs> you are exactly right, Escobar. <laughs> um, yeah. I got another, another personal selection: Small Soldiers. That's probably oh that's nostalgia. That oh my god, dude! I couldn't tell you. I wanted a small soldier so fucking bad, and they had them like at Burger mm. King. They weren't the real right. deal. Uh but man, what a wow! What a good movie. I don't know, but I liked it. I recommend I'll never small the, soldiers. The jump at the end. Jump at the end. <laughs> There's like this ramp that they jumped at the end, and it was just hysterical. <laughs> oh, if, right. that, if you could pull that up, ever like and just watch <laughs> that, it's so funny. Uh, isn't David David Cross is in that movie? He's the guy that's yeah, like yeah. all about the lore behind the the characters, the the toys, and nobody gives a shit. They right. implement with like military grade right. microchips, which starts. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy to think about that. Must have been because I loved that movie when I was a kid. That was definitely most definitely my first interaction with David Cross. Oh yeah, oh yeah, most that was sure. the first thing I ever watched David Cross in it. It's so good. 
Um, I think Tommy Lee Jones is the voice of the the main good toy. Or no, right. the bad toy. No, he's the bad toy. He's the enemy. And the good toy is like that alien race. Like, I don't remember who mm-hmm. it was voiced by. But um, yeah, Small Soldiers. A young Kirsten Dunst and uh, some other kid. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I know she's in that movie. Another movie I'm going to recommend here, uh, Pleasantville. Uh, watch that in school. Uh, interesting movie. Um, basically, like it's a, like a 1950s sitcom. And they start uh, discovering, all the teenagers in town start discovering things that they're not supposed to do and then add color to their life. And there's the whole thing. And yeah, it's, it's kind of like uh, The Giver. Yes. Yep. Um, Probably fact, actually based off of The Giver. We actually read The Giver and then watched Pleasantville. So, oh, well, there you go. Yeah, that's what we did in school. So Pleasantville, I recommend. Uh, this is a teen comedy uh, I'm going to recommend here. Can't Hardly Wait. Can't Hardly mm. Wait. Uh, that's a uh, a movie with, uh, what's that? The kid from What About Bob and Hook. Uh, he's a nerdy teenager in this. He has this moment where he sings Paradise City. He gets drunk. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, Seth Green. Seth Green's in it. Seth Green's in it, yes. He plays... He plays the guy with like the the goggles on his head, the big poofy jacket, mm. Jenko mm-hmm. jeans. Yeah. Yep. He talks like, "Yo, girl, how you doing?" You know, stuff like that. Yeah, it's uh, he's just ridiculous. Um, Jennifer Love mm-hmm. Hewitt's in it. Mm-hmm. Think of who else? The guy who loves Barry Manilow, whoever that is. I forget. Oh yeah, yeah, that guy. <laughs> the yep. main character, yep. whoever he is. He was in uh, Empire Records as well. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good teen movie. Um, it's probably just nostalgia. If anybody watches it now, they won't understand half the jokes, but um, I recommend that one. Yeah. Uh, another one, uh, I got The Faculty. Uh, oh, God. With Elijah Wood. And uh, oh, Elijah people. Wood was in that. Yeah, Elijah Wood, uh, John Stewart. Um, who else? You wouldn't think to be in a movie like that, but it is. I, um, I don't know. The, yeah. That movie's not very good, though. No, no, it's not. I'm recommending The then Faculty. Being, then then uh, sure. like, uh, yeah, uh, sure, yep. Usher, uh, that's right. Usher. Uh, sure. It might have been like a good. There was kind of a subculture of movies where like teachers were bad that were kind of like in the late nineties, and this was one of them. Oh yeah, like you, you can't trust them. They're out to get oh. you. They're evil. I think the main villain or the guy in the he might be the principal. He just passed away. T one thousand from Terminator mm-hmm. two. Yeah, he just passed away. See, I actually, I don't really care for like Robert Rodriguez films, to be honest. Oh, that's right. That's a Rodriguez film. That's right. That's one of his first ones, I think. Yeah, they um, end up being end up being like weird tentacle alien things or something, or something on that. Right? There's there's a part. That my favorite part of this movie is like the homecoming football game, where like it's in the <laughs> rain and like the monster needs water to like grow or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. And you just see the football players like going like ham against the team they're playing against and like dropping bugs in their helmets and stuff. It's pretty wild. <laughs> and like there's and then at like the end of the game, everybody just stands up and you can see the tentacles coming out of their face as they like drink the water that's coming from the rain. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. And there's a there's a song that's going on the whole time. It's a montage. It's it'd be the oh, one part oh. I would recommend people watch. Because it's <laughs> very ninety eight. Very nineteen ninety eight. Um move on now to uh, another personal selection of mine. Uh, I like this movie a lot. Uh Rounders, Matt Damon. Mm. Uh Edward Norton, uh, about poker, card dealers, stuff like that. Mm. Poker players, very good. Um, very good. I actually will watch that yeah. movie like once a year. Um, I won't delve too much into it, but it's got a very good story. Um, it's really fascinating. If you like poker or cards at all, even in a you know, even if you're a magician, you'll like this. It's Rounders. Uh, sure. Can't recommend it enough. One uh, of my favorite sayings is from that movie: "All you need is a chip and a chair." <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Needs a chip a chair. Yeah. Um, Basically meaning all you need is a chance. Yeah. Um, I if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Uh, the Rounders, or not the Rounders movies. Rounders. Uh, another one. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite movies of the '90s. One of my favorite movies of all time. Honestly, if it wasn't for Dumb and Dumber, this would probably be viewed for me as the funniest movie of '90s. Um, it's a very close second. I can't say enough good things about this movie. Uh, the Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, of course. Uh, I love this fucking movie. Um, I'll let you guys go if you have anything, any scenes that you want to say or talk about. Uh, God. There's so many. The whole thing is hilarious all the way through. So if you're if you're picturing the Big Lebowski and you got that one scene to tell somebody, what oh, would it be? I don't know. Um, well, when he's with uh, what was the lady's name? 
Kitty, right? Oh, um, what's her name? The the young, the young uh, lady. I can't remember her name. Yeah, I, I can't. Kitty, remember. probably. But hanging out, and then he sees a uh, Uli passed out in the pool. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She's all like, "Oh, be exhausting." <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> Um, yeah, Nick, you got any, uh, any um, Big Lebowski that sticks out to you? I mean, I, the, that whole movie is awesome. I just love every, everything about that movie. So I'd have to say if I'd have to pick a scene, um, probably the scene where they're dumping, uh, Donnie's ashes. Oh God. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it all blows back. Yeah. yeah, it all blows back. Oh my God, dude. But um, just, you know, or the infamous scene, of course, with the don't step over the line, you know, um, <laughs> he pulls out the Walter pulls out a gun, you know, and it's, oh, yeah. it's just so great. It, it's so funny. Uh, Esteban, you got anything? This from the... is not, what does he say? This is not. This is, yeah, um, this, this is, is a bowling, there are rules. I've, I've only actually <laughs> yeah. seen it, I think, once, maybe twice. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I, I loved oh, it. Wow. I thought it was great. I waited a long time to watch it the first time. I mm-hmm. think that was part of it. So like all the, like nobody's really, t- I'm surprised it's not higher on the list or even on the top 10, to be honest, because it is a huge today by, by the standards of right. all those movies you mentioned, this has probably grown the most in shares sure. in terms of oh, for sure. what people consider a yeah. good movie from 98. So mm-hmm. uh, John Candy's character, uh, is it John Candy? No, John uh, Goodman. John Goodman. John Goodman. Yeah. John Goodman. Yeah. 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 Goodman. yeah. Uh, John Goodman's character is pretty awesome in that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Walter. Yeah. He's fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, when he, you know, he stepped over the line. Sorry, it's a yeah. zero. Sorry, Spark. It's a zero. No, it's not, man. Mark, it's... Mark You're entering a world yeah. of pain. You're entering a world of hurt. And he pulls yeah. out a gun. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Mark, it's zero. Walter, and he, that, when he brings the dog and he says it's a Pomeranian, this fucking dog's got papers, dude. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's not fucking papers. It's not a Pomeranian at all. It's which is really hilarious. Um, the uh, the reason that um, what is it? Donnie gets told to shut up all the time is because of how much Steve Buscemi talked in Fargo, and they got a <laughs> the the Coen brothers like man, he just all the time yap yap yap. So the the next movie that he's in, every time he goes to say something, he gets told to shut up, <laughs> yeah. and uh, <laughs> fucking kills me. Uh, that one time they're in like watching a play. I think it's mm-hmm. the dude's neighbor who's got like some sort of like art thing going his, on. Oh, his it was his uh, landlord. His landlord, yeah. And uh, <laughs> they're yeah. watching it, and they're talking about it. I can't remember what exactly what they're talking about, but Donnie just chimes in with a little, "Hey, dude, does that mean shut the fuck up, Donnie?" And his is, is yeah, he's so <laughs> mad, he's oh, so God. angry, yeah, it's so, so angry. hilarious. He's I like love shaking with he's... anger. Yes, uh, the... anger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> the the made for TV <laughs> version. I... Oh, go on. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna. Ask, is there isn't there a theory about this movie too? Like, doesn't the dude isn't he supposed to be like some representation of Christ or something? I believe Buddha. <laughs> Buddha. Okay. Yeah, Buddha. I think. Yeah, I, I, because I remember thinking and seeing stuff about that and being like, "What?" You know. Yeah. But. <laughs> um, the made-for-TV <laughs> version of it where they edit it out. So, like the scene where John Goodman and, uh, you know, the dude, you know, Walter and the dude are going to that kid's house because they found his homework in their car. <laughs> Yeah. And he's like, is this your homework, Larry? Is this your homework, Larry? Yeah. We know it's his homework, dude. Larry, is there entering a world of hurt, Larry? Is this your homework? And the kid's just the staring kid's just blankly. Staring. Yeah. He's yeah. stonewalling us. All right, Larry, you're going to see what happens. And he says, you're going to see what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass, Larry. You're going to see what mm-hmm. happens. And he goes and grabs a baseball bat, starts beating the hell out of what he assumes Larry spent this money on for his car or whatever. This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass. Uh, John Goodman, real quick, I remember when he was filming that scene, he felt horrible for the people that were in the area hearing this crazy man <laughs> yell out, this is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass and just beating the <laughs> hell out of this car. But in the made-for-TV uh, version of it, it's this is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps, Larry. And so he just keeps saying that on the made-for-TV. This is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps, Larry. Um, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Um, I just... <laughs> I, like, I actually like that better. <laughs> That's <laughs> uh, God. Uh, I I just I love everything about that movie. Like like when he's filling <laughs> in the beginning, he's like going around and he's like looking in the he's in the grocery store and he sees like some milk or cream or whatever and he opens it up and drinks it 
and looks around to see if anybody saw that. And he's like, all right, I guess I'll get that or puts it back. And he's writing a checkout for like 26 cents. <laughs> yep. He's paying for it. <laughs> and he sees George H.W. Bush on the TV screen saying like, this aggression will not stand. This, it will not stand talking about Saddam and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, mm-hmm. he carries that lingo with him the rest of the way. This aggression will not yeah, stand, yeah. man. You know, just like, <laughs> you're pissed on your fucking carpet. Pissed on my fucking carpet. You know, and he's like, your carpet, dude. Donnie, please. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Uh, the Jesus guy licks the bowling ball. Every supporting character. Yep. Mm-hmm. Dude, I hate the fucking Eagles. And the guy kicks him out of the cab. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just yep. The nihilists. We are not. We believe in nothing, Lebowski. We are nihilists. Yeah. We believe in nothing. <laughs> and he's like, where's the money, Lebowski? Uh, and he takes his head out of the toilet. Why don't you put me back in? I think it might be further down. And he doesn't back in the toilet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh my god! I do just... I look like a do I look like I'm married? <laughs> like, dude, isn't this guy supposed he to be rich? He picks up the bowling. <laughs> he picks up the bowling ball. It's like, what the hell is this? Well, apparently, you've never been golfing. <laughs> uh, god, I just like I guess I could talk about that movie for hours. So, but we'll move on now to uh, uh, next. We only got a few left here for personal selections. Half Baked with uh, Dave Chappelle. Half Baked that came out in 1998. Love that. It's a classic stoner film. Yeah, yeah. I, I vaguely remember that movie. It's the, it's it's a good one. the quotable, you know. Uh, it's like the only time uh, I found What's His Face Funny. Uh, God, I can't remember the name. The, the stoner guy. Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer, yeah. Um, uh, what was his name? Uh, Stephen. Oh, Stephen Wright. Stephen, Stephen Wright. The guy oh, the, the guy on the, the couch. couch. Yeah. Literally, that's the character's name. Guy on the couch. <laughs> Yeah, just like that. Just fucking like, sleeping on the couch and <laughs> the whole movie. I like that. Says uh, maybe one line. Yeah, I think like he's like, "Hey, uh, try this out, guy on the couch." He like wakes up, rolls over, hits the jaw or hits the bowl, nods his yeah. head in approval, and then lays back down to go to bed. All right. <laughs> yeah. I like the Dave Chappelle face. Like, hey, scientists. He just calls them all scientists. Scientists. Mm-hmm. And I uh, just I love that. Um, Move on now. Another movie that's kind of a, a a hidden gem, so to speak. I watched it a couple times. I liked it. I might not like it now, but I put it down anyway. Dark City, the movie Dark City, nineteen ninety eight. Never heard of it. Oh, I've always I've Check always heard out. that was a good movie. I've never yeah. seen it though. Check it out. It's worth watching. Another one that came out, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, nineteen ninety eight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's classic. A good one. Yeah, uh, there's so many like from ninety eight to ninety nine is going to be insane. This my list is just going to grow. Um, maybe the greatest two years. Maybe ninety nine might be the greatest year for movies, and you know. But we'll. I don't. Know, we'll see. But right now, uh, Dirty Work is another one I'm going to suggest for oh, nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. Holy shit, Dirty Work. Um, Norm Macdonald. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any highlights from you guys for Dirty Work that that stick out to oh, you? Just just Don Rickles. Oh yeah. Like roasting them. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I. I absolutely love this movie. Yeah. Dirty work. It is so great. Um, I just I love the uh <laughs> when he when he's they put hookers in the trunk. <laughs> you know, and he's like put, pushing the buttons, it's like uh it's, they're doing a commercial, you know? Mm. And he's opening up all the trunks and he's like, What's with all the hookers in your trunk? What's going on? He's like, We're on live TV, we're we're doing this live. <laughs> he's like getting angry at him. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Chris oh, Farley's I... character with the nose, you know. Yeah, like, I think yeah. that was oh, one, yeah. I think that was his last movie, I believe, too. Mm, close. Close. I don't, well, I don't, I don't. There's oh, another it was one. like this uh like this west the shitty mm-hmm. western movie or something. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um but yeah, I I absolutely love Dirty Work. It is so funny. And uh that's that's where you got that line the uh must be uh your phone. You know, <laughs> right. I heard you yeah. say that quite often. So. Yeah. yeah. Um Brad uh, Esteban, any any dirty work highlights for you? If you haven't seen it in a while. I recommend watching it again. It's, it's yeah, I haven't it's seen amazing. it in a while. I just it's... remember the Don Rickles roast. Oh yeah, yeah. I need to see Dirty Work and Half Baked again because it's been a long yes. time. Yeah. So, uh, man, like what Nick was saying with like, hey, those trunks look pretty small. We're live. We're doing live here. <laughs> no, no, the trunks look fine, my friend. Here, I'll show you. And he goes and he pops <laughs> the trunks, and they're like, oh my god. And he closes. And he's like, no, it can't be. And he's like, oh, sir, was that a dead hooker in a car? No, it's not. Sir, I know a dead hooker when I see one. And he's like, <laughs> right. 
I'm ne-. And then the guy's like, I've never seen so many dead hookers in all my life. And the guy's like, Lord knows I have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don oh, Rickles, man. his insults are all improv, of course. They had Norm mm-hmm. had written this, but by the way, was directed by Bob Saget. Um, Dark Dirty Work was directed by Bob yeah. Saget. Um, right. And they had lines written out for Don Rickles, lines they think that he would say. And he didn't like them, so he just decided to rip on the <laughs> cast himself. And uh, that's where you get the, you know, you baby gorilla. You're swelling up as I talk to you. You know, <laughs> why don't you go buy a horse, go live in the mountains, and stop bothering people? I'm die. Call Baskin <laughs> Robbins. They're down to thirty. They're down to five flavors. You know, or something like that. Yeah, you know, he's just going off and on and on about it. It's like, uh, you got a personality like a dead moth. Yeah, <laughs> I love that line. Um, <laughs> yeah. The. The way that they get back at people, the dirty work, the the mm-hmm. little schemes they pull, they're hilarious. Um, there's so many. Uh, Chevy Chase, I find him hilarious in this movie. Their dad, uh, the guy who's uh, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. grandpa from Problem Child, you know, he's yeah. just so fucking funny. Um, God, I just I, I'm kind of I can't believe I'm drawing a blank here on all yeah. the things that I would want to talk about. Oh, but... um, I like um, the scene. It's kind of like near the beginning of the movie when. Uh... You're driving down the car, the down the road, oh. and um, it's playing that Green Day song, and uh, Artie Lang sticking his uh, like mooning the people out the window in right. the passenger seat, <laughs> and and Norm just parks the car right in front of the people that he's mooning and gets out of the car, <laughs> and he's like, you know, he's got to get out of the car and pull his pants up, and he's like, <laughs> he, he he's supposed to keep driving. Is what uh, <laughs> you remind me. Okay, so they're in the bar, and uh, he's talking to, like Travis Cole, uh, Shooter McGavin. From uh, Happy Gilmore is talking about the homeless, you know, and he's like, you know, they're homeless, yeah, and everyone knows mm-hmm, how I feel mm-hmm. about the homeless. They're people, and they have no homes, you know. And he's just like, man, Travis Cole's got such a great life, and the girl, the love interest, is like, why? Because he's rich? No, because he doesn't take crap from anybody, you know. And he's like, there's those that do this, that get stomped, and those that do the stomping. And she's like, who said that? And he's like, oh, that famous guy, uh, Jesus. And then she laughs, and then <laughs> yeah. he takes hands, you know. And then um, mm-hmm. his friend, Artie Lang, goes over and starts talking to this girl, or I might have this scene mixed up, but in order to get yeah. her to impress her, the first thing he says, his icebreaker is, I live with my dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she just ignores That's it. The She's the best like, icebreaker ever. Yeah. And it tells oh the guy, God. he's like, hey, buddy, lady isn't interested. Listen, pal, I yeah. think she is. All right, and she's like, "I think you two should fight it out. I think it's a great idea." And so they go and they fight it I out. I think it's and... a wonderful idea. I love the idea. idea. <laughs> Chris Farley's like, "You playing a song?" It's like, "Look, this is gonna be a yeah. bar fight." He's like, "Hell yeah, G yeah. seven. And yeah, yeah. You just hit G eight. Music, Rolling Stones, G seven. Yeah. Like, you just hit G eight. If you like pina colada, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now everyone's fighting the pina coladas. <laughs> Oh, oh god, my it's god, so it's so fucking good. I love that movie. Dirty uh Dirty Work, mm-hmm. absolutely watch that. Uh two more left here. Uh personal selection, basketball. Trey Parker, Matt Stone, basketball. Oh yeah. A ridiculous movie. But like they're only for one of their couple but limited forays into live action acting in that sense. Um if you haven't seen it, it's worth watching again. But it's not like the best thing they've done, but it's still pretty funny. It's got a lot of really hilarious lines and just over the top shtick and uh you know typical south park stuff um but my last personal selection unless anybody has anything to say about basketball they feel needs to be said uh, we'll move on to my last no. one okay uh last personal selection for 1998 is uh american history x now this movie oh yeah uh this movie was uh i, I, I didn't see it in 98 i didn't think i saw it till like 2000 something i was in high school but this uh very good movie uh, Edward Norton had his hands all over it because apparently he didn't like the way the director was doing a lot of things and the director got so mad that he took his name off the movie but for whatever Edward Norton did, whatever was done was great because it's an excellent movie um, it's definitely not an easy watch there's a few scenes in particular the one where he tells the gentleman to bite the curb and he puts his teeth on the cement and you can hear that yeah, scraping yeah. Ugh. and then obviously the shower scene yeah yeah Oh, yeah. Um, There's actually a funny story about that. All right, we can tell it. Um, you want me to? <laughs> yeah. So, all right, we are, uh, our buddy, uh, we knew our friend Timmy was coming over, and we had a, we were just hanging out at the house, and I decided to 
wouldn't it be funny if we were like watching something really weird that he just walked in on? We weren't saying anything, and then eventually right. it, it it morphed into. Wouldn't it be funny if we were all like you know not wearing shirts? Wouldn't it be funny right. if the lights were out? Wouldn't it be? But funny? it was really funny too because it was in a small room. Yes, very. It was right? just in a bedroom, and it was it was you and me, and it was also Baller and Brian. So we were all like shoulder to shoulder, shoulder to shoulder, shirtless. Yeah, <laughs> right. Shoulder to shoulder, shirtless, watching that scene specifically. We were watching waiting yeah, for yeah the shower yeah. scene for American History X with like a techno beat in the background. Yeah, <laughs> and then Timmy walks in because we hear him in the house, and I was like, nobody look over and laugh. So just stare yeah. straight ahead. Don't even make a face. And I just I see him open the door, and I, he like looks at the TV. He looks back at everyone. He's got a, a confused and horrified look. He doesn't know what to make of it. And I just start laughing. Oh my god. Um, oh. So, but that was I, great. I told him that I, you know, we'd never mention that. No one would ever know. So, good thing. Um, but yeah, American good history. Thing we brought X, that up. Uh, very good, very good movie. Recommend that. All right, now we'll move into the worst movies of 1998. Godzilla got that down. We'll move on nice. beyond that. Yeah, uh, Blade. Uh, Blade. Ooh, one of the worst movies of 1998. Yeah, I remember liking that movie, but you know, it probably does not hold up. I don't think so. It's not a very good movie. And I don't, I mean, I'm probably impartial. I don't like vampires. I don't like the whole blood sucking thing. I don't like the biting on the necks, the wrists, all that jazz. Drinking of blood creeps me out. So anything with yeah. vampires, I generally don't like. So <laughs> Blade doesn't help himself in that regard. It was um, like Matrix with werewolves and vampires. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. was all the intersection of a lot of things. <laughs> there was like, there was like a vampire rave party that just like, right. the, the sprinklers like sprinkled blood on them and. Yeah, it was really mm-ch, weird. Mm-ch, mm-ch, mm-ch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that weird, yeah, just weird stuff. <laughs> Euro techno <laughs> music in the background. Yeah. I'm sure that I'm sure that shit actually happens somewhere in the world and Vampires? they can they can ha- No, like blood blood <laughs> raves or whatever. Oh, like I'm right. sure. Oh yeah, Slayer raining blood is that basically for that one song. Yeah, but they don't actually rain blood on. Well, I think they do actually, but yeah. you, um, you can keep it. <laughs> uh, another worst movie of 1998, Halloween H2O. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, yeah. that's a shitty, shitty movie. Yep. Uh, is that the one where Michael Myers has eyebrows, or is that a different one? Maybe I know it's got Josh Hartnett or something. He's the son of uh, Laurie Stroud. You know what's her face from Halloween, the original Jamie Lee Curtis. It's at a school. Is that? And Michael Myers gets decapitated at the end, but then you find out in mm. Halloween, like Resurrection or something like that, with uh, Buster Rhymes and shit. That okay, right. he got that re- was one where he had eyebrows, like yeah, drawn well, on eyebrows okay. over the mask. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. No, so Halloween H two O, not good. Uh, I believe it was the twenty mm. year anniversary of the original film. So yeah, nah. that's why H two O Halloween yeah. twenty years later H two O. It wasn't nothing a call to, to drink water, water right? No, nothing to yeah. do with that. No, not, not a suggestion to hydrate, but just, yeah. All right, uh, another worst movie of 98. I still know what you did last summer, or the summer yeah. before last. Is that the second yeah, or yeah, third yeah. one? That's the second one. So that's but the second, yes. I still know what you did the but summer after been... the summer that was, yeah. We already did this joke. Yes, yes. We could, we'll move forward here. Uh, another worst movie, uh, Jack Frost. Uh, not the horror movie, the one with Michael Keaton. <laughs> where he dies i never he, saw it but he, yeah it's bad he becomes a snowman <laughs> he like he's like a, a absentee father who becomes a snowman and his son and him uh-huh. bond and he was a blues harmonica player or something i don't know it's oh not yeah good. it's not good it was just never good when you can say oh this movie not the horror one no the other one the horror yeah, one's probably better <laughs> yeah the family friendly one <laughs> yeah, where a man gets turned into a snowman monster. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on paper, it sounds like a horror film. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> he goes off the cliff and dies in a car within the first 10 minutes. <clears throat> um, Soul turns into a fucking snowman. <laughs> yeah, what kind of life is that? That's that's a punishment. Yeah. Um, let's see. We got uh, another worst movie. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another worst movie. Spice World. Spice World. Now I'm sure I'm sure some people like that movie. I have never seen that movie, but I know it's shit. Um, 
at least for me. I could say that it, it's almost universally hated, except for a small percentage of people. But the only time I've ever even seen this movie uh, was a long time ago. I had I slept, I fell asleep with the TV on, and I woke up to the Spice World, where it was the fourth wall break at the end of the movie or whatever it is, where they all look at the people watching, you know, they look at the camera and they're like, talk to the people watching the film as if they're seeing them. And so I wake up to the Spice Girls staring at me and asking me questions. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? Where am I? What's going on here? And I realized, oh, it's part of the movie. Like, I, it, for a moment, I got kind of freaked out. Like, I'd oh, yeah, fall asleep to fall asleep, like an Inception sort of deal. But I was mm. stuck with the Spice Girls. Um, another terrible movie of 98, The, bo- the Borrowers. Uh, I've never seen that movie. Never even really heard about it, but I know Christian said it was good, so I'm gonna put the it what? down. Yeah, I'm gonna put it down. The Borrowers, B O R R. Oh, the Borrowers. Borrowers. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Christian did say that was good. It's like, so it's like mice, right? They're like yeah. mice that steal shit or I think whatever. It, I don't know. People hmm. dressed as mice or something. Oh, I what? thought it was animated. What? Yeah. Or they're just small people. <laughs> people dressed as mice. I don't know. John Goodman. So it's in like it. it's like cats. Yeah. But mice. But mice. Without the songs. I think it's with James I Gordon it's... and Oh, they're not mice. They're little people. <laughs> yeah, they're oh little my people. god. Yeah. Okay. The Borrowers. One of the worst movies of nineteen ninety eight. Um the remake of Psycho. Put that in there too. Uh it was one of the one of the worst yeah, movies of nineteen. Didn't need to happen. Yeah. Uh Blues Brothers two thousand. Oh. Yeah. Nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight. Huh? I came out a couple years too early, right? <gasps> Right. <laughs> well, they, they were trying to get ahead of the curve there. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was saw that. I, I saw that in theaters because you know, you really? being a huge yeah, we oh, were all big God. Blues Brothers fans. So oh, no. you see one preview for a new Blues Brothers movie, it's like yeah, let's go see it. Yeah. I, yeah. Um. Another worst movie of '98. I'll be home for Christmas. Jonathan mm. Taylor Thomas. J. Yeah. Um. I don't remember oh, I th- why, but he had to wear like a. A Santa costume throughout the whole thing, and he became like he he got a ride from a group of old ladies, and he like threw up because it was too hot in there. I don't remember. It's just not very yeah, good. It's on a. Is it on Disney Plus? It... Yes, I I think I tried to watch it a a year or two ago. <laughs> probably trying to ride his home improvement fame because yeah. that show was probably ending, right? Yeah, very. I think yeah. it might have ended maybe in the year after, maybe ninety nine. Um. Yeah, not a very good movie. Uh, two nope. more left here. Uh, Almost Heroes. Almost Heroes. Which is the uh, Chris Farley's That's the last Chris film. Farley one, yeah. yeah, Matthew Perry. I, uh, I never yeah. saw it. Yeah. Never saw it either, but just panned all around. Um, and uh, the last worst movie of 1998 that I've got is Three Ninjas, High Noon at Mega Mountain. And I'm pretty Ooh, sure that's... That sounds exciting. Is that, that's... is that two or three or... Uh, that's four. <laughs> that's four. Good yeah, God! That's three ninjas four, and it stars three Hulk Hogan. Ninjas four. Hulk Hogan as the main villain. Oh, what? Hi, it's new. probably not the original. It's not the original three kids. I would assume, right? They were gone or is by it? Then. Uh, they're all they're like middle aged they, they, they Yeah, they're middle aged yeah. men. They got like uh, comb yeah. overs and five o'clock shadows and the drinking right. problems and shit. Uh, Tum Tum's addicted to heroin. <laughs> High noon at night. Right. Wow. Twenty year olds playing ten year olds. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Beverly Hills yeah. nine oh two one oh sort of deal. Right. Um yeah. all right. One of them's filing for re- <clears throat> you know retirement, social security. Three ninjas. High noon at Mega Mountain. Um, but yeah, um any other movies that I didn't mention, worse movies that stuck out to you, movies that you liked, anything in that regard, uh, feel free. Uh if nothing, then uh you guys I was just going to add as just sort of a, a take about all of these movies. It seems like it was a really good year for like comedies specifically. Oh yeah. So like the, a lot of your recommendations at least for comedies, I... and there was a couple comedies on the top 10. Hmm? I don't know. Cause chairman of the board comes up for 1998 movies. Oh God. The, the carrot, carrot top. top? Movie. Yeah. Phenomenal Norm Macdonald joke. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. March 13th. 1998. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you guys are talking about, Conan. Yep. Oh, yeah. Wow. Board spelled B O R E D. Yeah. I guess Conan was like, do something with that, you creep. And he did. Yeah. Like instantly. Yeah, yeah. it was perfect. Yeah. Oh, Deep Rising. Remember that, Deep Rising? That's Keanu Reeves. Right? 
that what about uh slc no. punk no. did slc punk yeah i didn't see it i didn't see it but if it did it it's did. showing up no D- deep rising as a uh, treat williams i don't know that. for fear and loathing okay. fear and loathing mm-hmm. we mentioned yeah yeah um i'm right. just very quickly looking at lists of 1998 movies and yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's a bu- bunch of shit. All right, well, we'll move on then to uh, yes. our music section of the podcast. Uh, we'll get that going now. Here is the music of the mighty. Mm. Yeah, we can only use that one God, more. Goddamn two bit podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cher is spinning in her grave. Um, all right, we will now go to uh, albums <laughs> that went number one in 1998. Uh, I'll start from the just just a list here. This isn't a top ten. This is just a list of albums that went number one. The Titanic official soundtrack, obviously. Uh, Dave Matthews Band before these crowded streets went number one in 1998. Jay Z's okay. Volume Two, The Hard Knock Life, went number one 98. Lauren oh. Hill. The Miseducation of Lauren Hill went number one. Hey, hey. yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, Beastie Boys, Hello Nasty, went number one in 98. Corn, Follow the Leader, went number one yeah, in 98. Yeah, yeah. And two more official soundtracks. It was the year of the official soundtrack. City of Angels, <sighs> official soundtrack. And Armageddon, City, official soundtrack. Um, yes, uh, let's see. Of for course. Titanic, we got My Heart Will Go oh, On. Oh. Dave Matthews, oh, yeah. and I can't remember what song went why it would go number one because the album beforehand was all their hits so i'm not even sure which what was on that who the fuck knows um jay-z the hard knock life you got the hard knock life obviously number of yeah. other songs uh lauren hill that album is, is considered a classic um one of the best of the 90s the miseducation of lauren hill i not really i'm not really the demographic but i respect the uh the artistry yeah PC boys uh hello nasty uh that has the interplanet Intergalactic, intergalactic planetary? planetary, yeah, yeah. planetary intergalactic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, that song fucking rips, uh, man. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, Corn Fall Leader is probably, oh god. Um, did you have iconic, that album? Iconic. Yeah, I feel like you I, had that. I album. mean, it is. I did that's have one, that album. Yeah, that's the one with like Freak on a Leash and Got yeah. the Life. Got yeah. the Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But. You know, if you listen to the whole thing, it really takes a dive after the first few songs that are the hit songs. The thing is, is it, it just goes downhill. Yeah, it's not even the tracks start at track like fourteen, because the first thirteen songs are all blank. They're like a minute long, and there's nothing on them. So on the album, you have to go to track fourteen to even start the album. Um, oh, I don't remember that, but yeah. what, what a stupid gimmick. Yep. Yeah, I remember that annoyed me. I was like, wait, did I get a blank that's CD? That's, 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 that's art. <laughs> that's art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um but for me i got my personal album you just picks, don't get it yeah i i mean yeah I, in junior high i got it but yeah uh my personal album picks of 1998 i got the offsprings americana with uh, oh, yeah. why don't you get a job uh the oh god the pretty fly for a white right. guy yeah. yeah pretty fly for the a white guy right. yeah that was like my i mean i know i heard self-esteem and all that stuff earlier but <sighs> pretty fly for a white guy was like the first offspring song that was big for me that whole album is actually uh, man was it the first song uh, not not the intro not the welcome to americana but that it's like mm, i forget what it's called but it's fucking <laughs> awesome then it goes right into the next song which is like walking on the sun or something like that are you talking about smash uh, mouth no no it's it's also an offspring song. Is, is abracadabra on that album is that a song by am i thinking of the right band mm. Abra, abracadabra. Abracadabra. oh i We're coming that's... at you no. <laughs> I'm going to reach out and grab you. Yeah. No, that's that not the offspring. You sure? Ever. I think that's a uh, sure. Steve Miller band. Um, Sugar they... Ray. Sugar Ray. <laughs> Sugar Ray. <laughs> okay, there you go. Whatever. Um, Have You Ever is the name of the first song off of Americana. Oh, okay. And I think it's fucking awesome. Yeah, Staring at the Sun. It's Staring at the Sun, not Walking on the Sun. Sorry. Ah, okay. Uh, um, but yeah, so yeah, that's a personal album pick for my uh, 1998. Another one I've got, and I just listened to this album. I just like discovered it, and I recommend it. It's you got to be in, I think, in a in a certain mood, but I do think it's worth at least a listen through. Uh, Neutral Milk Hotel 
in the aeroplane over the sea. Oh, calmly, which is like later on in the album, I think is the best song off that album. In the aeroplane over the sea is also a good song as well. Uh, the uh-huh. carrot king ho. The first two tracks, they're basically like the like, it, well. I mean, the album itself was intentionally recorded. It sound like someone like like I don't know like the, in photography, you take a picture, you got like a film reel, and you like run it over some cement to try and give it some sort of rough ev- you know edges, and that's basically it's what they did with this the recording of this album. Okay. Um, no distortion pedal, no pedals at all used. So anything you hear is just created in some other fashion. Um, a lot of strange instruments being used. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but like the the Beach Boys used it for good vibrations. That's a little bit. It's in there for a minute. Um, a theremin. Theremins uh, are used. Yeah. They got some horns that are used. Uh, different types of trumpets and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's it's definitely a good album. I I recommend listening to it. Uh, another personal album pick for me, I've got the Bare Naked Ladies Stunt because it has one week on it. And that's, that was the best thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of that, course. That, it's uh, been. Juan, where you, yeah, Chickity <laughs> China, the Chinese chicken. The Chinese chicken. Yeah. Yes. And my last personal album pick for 1998 was Metallica's Garage Inc. Um, I listen to that album a lot. Oh, yeah. Got the got a lot of good covers yeah, that was a on cool, it. That was a double album. Yep. Yeah, a lot of good covers on it. Yeah, it was all covers. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think of uh, there was one song they did the Blue Oyster Cults uh, astrology or astronomy 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 yeah, astronomy, yeah. They, that's uh, a, yeah that's a really good that's a, their version of it is infinitely better whiskey than the Blue whiskey Cult. in the jar whiskey in the jar yeah uh, Tuesday's gone they did it yeah, with turn uh, the page yeah Tuesday's gone yep yeah a lot of good stuff uh, some misfits. they did some Motorhead songs they, yeah die yeah. die my darling um they do mm-hmm. like what is the name of that? In the Curse of the Pharaoh. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, it's uh, a yeah, it's like a medley of a bunch of uh, yeah, it's a, Merciful, really Fate Merciful Fate songs. Fate, yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's be a personal album pick of 1998. Um, we'll get to worst albums of 1998. Uh, mm. This may be a bit too soon. Uh, I have, can I, can I oh, add one yeah. more sure. uh, album that is near, near and dear to my heart in 1998 that I would sure. like to add to the list? Uh, Eve Six with their self-titled album. Oh yeah, Eve Six. Mm. Oh yeah, yes. uh, the, uh, Inside Out. Inside Out. Yes. Yeah, I would swallow my pride. Doesn't it have like a fly on the cover or something? I don't <laughs> it know. Does, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah good Dude, stuff. I've never listened to that album, but that song is fucking awesome. It's fun to that, play. That, that takes it takes me right back. Yeah. Album's um, not bad. Anybody else have any albums they want to throw in? Throw in the bucket? Just toss them on in. Yeah. Nah. All right. Mm. We'll move on to uh, Worst Albums of 98. Like I said, I hope this isn't too soon, but I don't really care. Uh, Aaron Carter's debut album, Aaron Carter. Uh, I know he's like 11, <laughs> oh. but I don't give a shit. That's that's horrible. Uh, look what it is. So, what, so Aaron's Party was what, his, his sophomore album then? That's when he really broke out and he found his chops oh, yeah. and his musical <laughs> right. ability. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron's party coming. Oh, and he just he just died, right? Yeah, he yeah, did. Okay. Yeah, he did. That's why I said it might be too soon to say that guy had a show. That was like album. a week ago, wasn't it? No, no, this is like no idea. I gave like months a month ago. At least a month. Months ago. Maybe a month and a half. Um Does time really move right? that quickly? Was he like a Disney guy or something? Oh man, it was then... it was in November, yeah. It was, it was a couple uh, months ago. Nick Carter's brother, Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. Mm. He might have been on some Disney show. It's very possible like that. he yeah. probably yeah was on Disney. All right, uh, another worst album of '98. I'd be on NSYNC's NSYNC, their debut album. Um, Sly isn't here. What's to wrong with that argument? Uh, I, oh, I'll argue it. What's wrong right. with that? Uh, <laughs> it was the signaling of the oncoming uh, boy. Oh, girl the boy group. band. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I hated it at the time, of course, but in retrospect, like it's just fine pop yeah. music yeah, it's... it's just pop me i'm not saying it's i guess that's the problem though because there's nothing really right it's just know. there um, it's just catchy and yeah. that's pretty much it uh there's a the little dawn bit of, of a... boy bands yes the dawn of the, the yeah. reemergence of the boy band or the yeah. dawn of him whatever whatever you want to say but um oh, here we go again another worst album 98 98 degrees 98 degrees and rising yeah that yeah, album yeah. again Another boy band. Uh, this one That's was a good fun. name for an album, by the way. I kind of like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I wonder how much it rose. 
uh, point one. <laughs> Probably cooled down a lot, actually. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, did it get up to like fever, like a hundred and one degrees, <laughs> right, and then right. then drop back down? The second home was thirty degrees mm-hmm. and falling. Um, <laughs> right, yeah, that frozen tundra. <laughs> <laughs> their last, their last album was Absolute Zero, <laughs> and that's th- th- that's where they just Good stopped. Job. Yeah, just got them on the cover. Just got them like covered in like icicles and stuff like that. Yeah, oh my God. lost in the Serbian wilderness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Another worst album of '98. Uh, uh, this one's good. Uh, Vanilla Ice, hard to swallow. His new metal album. Uh, fan. What? Jesus. Yeah. What? I wasn't, this I wasn't is expecting to me. hear his name. Yeah. Nope. No. Yeah. Vanilla yeah. Ice, hard to swallow. His meta, uh, new metal album, where he's a uh, you know. He did new metal. Wow. For one, it was hard to swallow, he's... but he did it. Um, mm. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> another terrible album for 1998. Uh, shares believe. I'm sorry, I'm throwing that on there. That auto tune shit has really put a damper on music. Um, oh yeah, this not good. Uh, I don't no, know. I don't think that was her intention. No, but yeah, or, or the producer's intention or whoever. Because uh, I think it was accidental, if I recall. Yeah, it wasn't. It's like, oh, that, oh, that sounds weird. Let's keep that, and then it just that was it. Yeah, that's all it took. Uh, we got three more here for worst albums of uh, 98. Uh, let's start with this one. Godsmack's original Godsmack. Godsmack Fuck album. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I never liked them. Yeah. You would have thought I would have liked that band. That's a band that seems tailor made for S. Dave Vaughn in eighth grade. <laughs> no. No, I never liked them. Uh, they did that voodoo <laughs> song. No, I'm not the one who's so far yeah. away. So far away. Yeah. <laughs> Make my hands yeah. to my veins. <laughs> There's that, there's that cool tribal the doom yeah i don't know it just seems like it was created in a lab for me but it didn't work uh, <laughs> uh, all right we've got two more here i've got corn follow the leader yeah um and yeah. i've got kid rocks devil without a cause Oh, that that's one of the greatest ball albums with of all the time. ball. Yeah, <laughs> Kid Rock. Holy shit! Yeah, Devil. I am the bull god. Uh, um, <laughs> only God knows. Cowboy. Why. Cowboy. Yeah. yeah. Cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah! Yeah, dude, I've got that CD somewhere. <laughs> I still have it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it just has his middle finger on it because it's really <laughs> fucking that. That's the kind of guy he was. Just yeah. a rebel. He's changed yeah. a lot. If I had to pick one album that you've mentioned that represents 1998, that would be the one, though. Like, that's, I would go with. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're not yeah. wrong. In the future, right. like, we had a time capsule. This is the one sound you get to hear from 1998. <laughs> ball with the ball. <laughs> yeah. It would be that album. Here you go. My name is Kid. <laughs> My name is... <laughs> uh, All right. We will now, <laughs> unless someone else has to throw out a worst album that I didn't mention, we'll move on to top song. Um, wow. All right, we'll move on to top songs. Top songs here. Let's see if you guys remember these. Um, the song Too Close by Next. It sounds like I don't really remember that, but if you listen to it, oh my God, yes. It's like, I'm dancing real close. Oh, yeah. It's hard for me. And I know it's trying. And it's trying. <laughs> that song. Junior High yep. Dances Galore. That's all it was. I'm dancing real close. I think it's too close, not real close. Too close. Yeah. Um, so oh, that's. Yeah, just, I uh, recognize it. Yep. Top song, one of the top songs of 1998. The top one being Believe by Cher. Um, <laughs> uh, another top song, The Boy is Mine by Brandy and Monica. I remember the title. I probably would remember if I heard it, but it was definitely a top song, so I had to include it. Yeah, I remember, um, I remember that. You're Still the One by Shania oh, was, Twain. Oh, sorry, go on. The, the, that boy is mine or whatever. I feel like that held the record for like longest, uh, whatever the M- MTV show that we all watched, TRL Live or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. That held the record for like number one, probably the longest of that entire, entire show's history. Really? It was that, that music video, at least. Damn. Um, well, this boy is, is mine. Yeah, because TRL came out, uh, well, not to spoil it, but TRL came out this year. Uh, or 98 so i mean had they had uh what was what the hell was that mariah carey and boys to men song it was the number one for like 
16 to 19 weeks or something. It was number one in the year before, and it didn't stop being number one until March of the following year. It was mm. repl- and it was uh, replaced with Celine Dion, so things got better. Um, but yeah, uh, what was the next one? Oh, the next one is uh, "You're Still the One" by Shania Twain. Every mm? buddy that got song. married, uh, and that was their wedding it's good, song. It's a good country song. Yeah, uh, "Truly, Madly, Deeply" by Savage Garden. Oh, great song! And I, is that the one where it's the um, Cherry Coke song, or is that the... no, no? It's the I'm gonna stand with you on a I'll mountain. I'll be your oh, no. wish. I'll be your dream. I'll be your, your fantasy. fantasy. Yeah, as yeah. I as I sang it on the last episode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's mm-hmm. pretty emo, really actually. Yeah, back. that's right. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. And the way the outfits they wear are very emo. Um, I believe they're from Australia. To uh, Savage Garden. Um. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. All right. We got another top song is "How Do I Live" by Leanne Rhymes. That's still like uh, from Con Air. How do we? Oh live yeah. Without you? Yeah. Another uh, really pretty female country song. There it is. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, we've got "Together Again" by Janet, which was Janet Jackson, but she cut out the Jackson and just kept the Janet. 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 Hey, yeah. Janet. That's the. Mm-hmm. Oh God. Every Janet. every path I go, every smile I see. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I... yeah, yeah. That's Janet. Janet. Together again. <laughs> one of the top songs. <laughs> in 1998. Uh then we've got another one. We've got All My Life by Casey and Jojo. All my life. Baby, baby. Yeah, that song. Uh staple Ooh, yeah. of uh junior high dances once yep, again. Yep. Yeah. Um they got I Don't Wanna Wait by Apollo Cole. Uh <clears throat> That's Dawson's Creek. Oh, oh yeah, that is Dawson's over. Creek. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Oh, uh, that's, got, a, that's a good one. Yeah, uh, we got uh, well, I guess they're not. The, well, whatever. I'm gonna call them the Dixie Chicks. They're the chicks, the Dixie Chicks. Chicks. Oh yeah. Wide open spaces. Hell yeah. Rooms to yep. make the yep. big mistakes. Um, we've got uh, how is it gonna be by Third Eye Blind. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got one of the better ones, or, or sorry, not better, one of the bigger ones of the year. Uh, My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. Oh, of course. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. Uh, we've got Everybody, Backstreet's Back by the Backstreet Boys. Was there? Everybody. Yep. Um, yeah. I don't... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to miss a thing. Or I, just, I don't want to miss a thing by Aerosmith. No. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, their only number garbage. one hit of their career. <laughs> garbage. And it's, and it's a cover. Yeah. Is it cover? Yeah, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was yeah, a that was a... No, it was a country song. Huh. What are you saying? Like, uh, who did that? Cheryl Crow and something like that? Cheryl Crow? Interesting. Or am I thinking about some... It was like a duet, or am I thinking about some other song? You're probably thinking a picture with Kid Rock and Cheryl Crow. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. I was headed to church. <laughs> oh, fuck you. No, I that song. <laughs> Oh, never mind it, it. It was it was written by Diane Warren, who originally envisioned it would be performed by Celine Dion or somebody like that. So no, it was Aerosmith. Huh. They didn't write it though. Right, right, right. All right, we got a uh, yeah, we got a few more here. Um, another top song of 1998, uh, "Sex and Candy" by Ma- Marcy Playground. Oh yeah, I felt cool yeah. listening to that song and yeah, that hanging around. around. Downtown. Down, 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 so, down, so. Down, Music down, video down. was interesting too. It had like a tarantula, his head sticking through the floor. Ooh. Yeah, all that good stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Another one. Uh, one week bare naked ladies. I already mentioned it. It's bound. Mm-hmm. One week. <laughs> it's bound. <laughs> uh, uh, another one here. Ghetto superstar. That is what you are by Pras Michelle, old dirty bastard, and Maya. Uh, Ghetto superstar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Which is like that's islands, the di- in diamond, islands in the Stream that's yeah. written yeah. by uh, Barry Gibb. And, uh, yeah, and Actually. covered by Dolly Parton. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ghetto Superstar. That's how far that song's come. <laughs> right. Who would have told if you had told yeah. Barry Gibb? You know what? You can still tell him today. That's true. He's not dead yet. <laughs> Well, if I, I ever honestly, see him, he pro- he's probably okay with it. Yeah, I'll uh, ask him how he feels about Ghetto Superstar. Yeah. <laughs> 
get one chance. I get one thing to say with Barry right. David. It's going to be. What are you talking about ghetto superstar? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you really envisioned? Um, all right. This one, let's see if you guys can oh, remember this one. <laughs> um, we got uh, Never Ever by All Saints. Every girl I knew in junior high loved this song. And they would always like verbatim quote it from the beginning because it's just women. It's just somebody talking. It's like, did I ever treat you right? Did I ever oh, God. start to fight? You know, and then it starts, it goes to this, like starts singing it. And it's like, never, ever, ever, ever felt so low. Oh, yeah. Na, 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 na. It's what got a, a nice song. It's got a, yes, very much so. It's got a nice little, uh, I don't know. I feel like it. I don't know. I want to say jazzy, but it's got a, a very interesting melody that you don't really hear, especially in '98. Um, but as it stands, mm. it's not a very. I don't find it to be a very good song. Um, it is an earworm for sure. Um, uh, we've got a uh, couple more, few more here. Uh, I'll be by Edwin McCain. Yeah, Edwin McCain. Remember that guy? Oh God. Yeah. I'll be your crying shoulder. Your crying shoulder. <laughs> I'll okay. be. Girls, he was hair. <laughs> oh God! Uh, they got "Ray of Light" by Madonna. In the little mm-hmm. ray of light. And then uh, "Bittersweet Symphony" by The Verve, which yeah, they cool yeah they lost all their money they made from that because the Rolling Stones sued them. Yeah, um, because they used a, a a sample from a Rolling Stones song, and to be honest with you, their version of it is infinitely better than the Rolling Stones. So. Fuck the Rolling Stones for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. But we'll move on to worst songs of 1998. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we've got uh, Make Him Say Uh from Master P featuring Fiend, Silk the Shocker, Mia X, and Mystical. You remember that song? Make Him Say Uh. Uh. Na 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 na. Oh, yeah. 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 Na, na, yeah na, I remember na. the na 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 na. Yeah. It's my alarm clock, dude. Make him say, That's how I wake up to it every day. Na na na. That's all I know about that song. That's it. Uh, uh, we got. Uh, now I want it to be my alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> that dream come true. Uh, we got uh, Cowboy by Kid Rock. Cowboy. Yeah. Cowboy. Yeah. yeah. Then we've got. It does uh, have that. It does oh. have a cool, like, ragtime piano little thing in there somewhere. That's true. That's true. So. And I got that sweet little drum roll. Yeah. Kid Rock coming off the block. I don't know if he says that, but it's somewhere on there. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Kid Rock coming off the block. Going to catch your whole flock. Take stock. Yeah, I don't know. Um, all right. Was he well, ever? Was he ever actually elected to anything? I know he ran for office. Oh, I don't know. Hmm? I don't think so. I don't think so. You know. Perhaps. Perhaps he, did. he should stay know. in his lane. Yeah. Um, the fast lane. All right. Now we. Will... Oh God, hmm. this one. Fucking hell! I had to. I. Had to... This is a deep cut, but I know it's a bad song. All in the family. Corn featuring Fred Durst, off the album. Follow the leader. Yeah, that song's. Yeah, I don't it's, know. It's like a diss track. They're like dissing each other. There's a lot of uh, slurs thrown. Yeah, a lot of but 90s mostly the f bomb. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not good. It's like what meth and cocaine and copious amounts of drugs and alcohol will do when you were in a recording studio. Yeah, all in the nineties. In the nineties, yeah. <laughs> uh, now we've got the "Come with Me" song, uh, Puff Daddy, featuring Jimmy Page from the movie uh, Godzilla. Um, where it's got that the song starts off with <laughs> like a lightning strike and then you hear Godzilla's Arr! and then it's like uh huh yeah <laughs> da, 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 da. it's like yeah, it's just it's just the yeah it's just the riff from Cashmere uh huh yeah uh huh yeah um Timmy yeah, that, that, one time it's amazing <laughs> it's <art. laughs> Timmy <laughs> One time we went to go get a pizza at like a, in Wanata, and Timmy was like, oh, we take my mom's car, something like that. And I was like, all right. And he popped in a tape that he had found that was a cassette that said Dookie. It was legit. It was Dookie, t- a cassette tape of the album Dookie, Green Day. And he plays mm-hmm. it, and it's, I drink what? Oh, huh. yeah. Apparently, he taped over 
Dookie <laughs> with the Godzilla soundtrack. <laughs> and so we were we were driving in the van, just going, and all of a sudden, you know, we're like, all right, Green Day. And then all of a sudden, oh, uh-huh, yeah. And I look like, what the fuck? <laughs> I guess I taped over it. It's taped over Dookie with the Godzilla <laughs> soundtrack. Holy shit. Man. Hilarious. Oh, I was dying. He was so Jesus upset. He was Christ. so mad at Nobody was madder than Timmy. He was upset with himself, believe me. But God. <laughs> so fucking funny. Uh, and here's another one. Uh, another worst song of 98. Are You Jimmy Ray by Jimmy Ray. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, no. What? No. What a unique... Are you I Sting mean, Ray? Yeah, are you... <laughs> League Ray? I don't even know what the hell he says. Yeah. <laughs> but the song Are You Jimmy Ray... From Who wants to know? Jimmy Ray. Yeah. Well, that's the Who thing. Who wants to know? Apparently, no one wanted to know, or they knew enough, because he didn't have anything else pop up on any of the charts. Are you Jimmy Ray? <laughs> from Jimmy Ray. Now, I don't... I mean, that's such a confusing title. <laughs> Are you Jimmy Ray? By the guy who's called Jimmy Ray. Are you Jimmy Ray? <laughs> right. No, you're Jimmy Are Ray. Are you Jimmy Ray? You know, who wants to know? Oh, you who Sting wants Ray. to know? Nobody wants to know. Nobody. Or they know oh, enough. Man. They don't. We don't care, Jimmy Ray. The, the music video oh. is strange. It was like he was trying to be Elvis esque in a trailer park. He's from the UK, I believe. Um, but he only had one mm. song. Another. I once Dude, had that. He needs song. to make a comeback, man. <laughs> uh, greatness I'm, takes time. I'm still Jimmy Ray. Right? Yeah, I am Jimmy Ray. I've always been Jimmy Ray. Oh yeah, but... you're not <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Ray. I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He finally got the confidence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I right. am Jimmy Ray. Very inspirational. <laughs> We nice had... arc. <laughs> <laughs> right. We had this... Uh... I am Jimmy Ray. <laughs> I am Sting Ray. <laughs> oh, he's all of them now. Yeah. You all yeah. know. You all know. <laughs> you all know. Yeah. <laughs> Just changes the lyrics. <laughs> Switches them. Oh, God. We had this song on a CD in legit 20 times in a row. And it was on the CD titled Big Buford. And we put it in. We went to the beach and we didn't let the person... How many? How long is this song? It's on there 20 times in a row. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, man, those uh, were the days. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was a good week. It was like last week. Um, all right, we'll go to uh, another <sighs> worst song of 98. Only got four more, um, including this one. <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll leave these last two. All right, you got Share Believe is one of the worst songs of 98. Uh-huh. Can only go with that. God Smacks Voodoo. We just already covered that in a way. All right, right. Now, now I got these two here. Um, all right, I'll go with this one first. One of the worst songs of 1998. Mark Wills, Don't Laugh at Me, which is the don't laugh oh, yeah. at me, don't call me names. And it's like, yeah. don't get your pleasure from my pain. From my pain, yeah. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's this country music song about, I don't know. In Allah's any... eyes, we're all the same. I like Mark Wills. I don't know this song, but I like other, like the, the I didn't know he had, wow. I didn't know he had other songs. Honestly, didn't. I thought he had <laughs> Don't Laugh at Me. <laughs> well, don't. Goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> And the last one, <laughs> maybe the worst song in 98, maybe. Uh, Steve mm. Warriner, Holes in the Floor of Heaven. Oh, There's yeah. That's a classic. Holes in the floor of heaven, and the <laughs> yeah. tears are falling down. That's how I know she's watching. <laughs> Wishing she'd she be, be here now. Here now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm lonely. I remember she can't see it. Because there's holes in the holes floor of heaven. In the floor that's of a heaven. weird name of I don't know this song, but yeah. that Watch sounds it. like a hazard. I, right, that's what I'm saying. I'm, <laughs> right? like, I'm like, are they finishing Whoa. the construction soon? Is, they don't how have what's going on for. There's I don't no think they have uh, I don't think they have OSHA in heaven. So yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. It's, it's well, all very got... hastily put together. And there's holes <laughs> right, everywhere. Yeah. Well, here's another thing. Yeah. It could be uh, misunderstood. Like it's actually not a very good thing. All the angels are like tied up and they have like their tear ducts like pulled up down for like you know for them yeah. to cry and they just flood it down right. so, i'm just wondering why yeah. would it, these angels need holes to see through <laughs> like that they're limited through that you know what i mean it's just for the tears uh, so, but, but because yeah well well not it's suggesting that they're looking through down through the hole right to see you oh and then as they're they're crying because they're and and as they're crying because they're looking through the hole they're going through the hole and that's rain that's precipitation yes. yep 
Mm-hmm. Um, that that is a scientific <laughs> explanation, and that's how it. you know right. they're watching. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know. Wishing yeah. they could be here now. So yeah. that's the thing. Is like anytime you want to have anything good, any kind of like outside get together, you want to have some fun. They have real sad that they can't be there, so it gets rained out. Why are they so uh, sad? Yep. Why are they so sad though? Like, <laughs> right. am, I, am, I, am I that pathetic? Like, is... <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. What are you crying think, about, angels? I'm I think generally he- all right. Like, <laughs> I think heaven heaven sucks so bad they wish they were back. Right. That's why. So it's got it's holes in the floor, terrible. dude. I mean, what else do they have? You know, rats. <laughs> <laughs> to go along with the golden streets, I should have focused more on the, you know, solidifying the floor. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. The, I don't know. You think after a couple years of seeing what's going on, you won't be that sad about missing out, you know? But no. Yeah. I guess not. Um, All right, guys. Well, that will do it for the music section of the podcast. And we will now move into uh, TV shows of 1998. All right, and uh, TV shows that debuted in the year 1998. Uh, that 70s show. Mm. That 70s show debuted. Yeah, that was a good show. Really, it appeared that late in the 90s? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like, a, oh, man. Oh, that makes sense. We've already been through the 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> didn't hear that on there. Yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of experience watching this show. What I have seen seems funny. Um, but it's just, it's the laugh track for me. Seinfeld's like the only show that I can like watch right. with a laugh track. I think The Office, yeah. Arrested Development, and shows like that with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, no laugh track or, you know, curb just made it. I have a hard time watching laugh tracks. If I didn't watch it when I was younger, it's hard for me to get into it now. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, do you, do you guys watch the seven, that 70s show? Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I think there's, I, right. I can't, I can't pick out any specific moment in the show. It, it ran for a long time, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Esteban, um, is it? Oh, go on. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, uh, I mean, I didn't watch it a lot, but I mean, it was on TV. It wasn't a horrible thing to have on and have on in the background. I mean, right. I don't yeah, know. Right. Right. It was on for a long time, so people must have watched it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I heard a thing somewhere that the character Fez. I don't know. I don't know if it's in an episode or something. If they explain it or whatever, but apparently his name. Uh, stands for foreign exchange student yeah it's it's an acronym yeah, yeah it's, an acronym. it's an acronym yeah i didn't know that forever i just i don't know if that stuff. was from the show or if someone else from the show explained that in like oh, interview or something right because i think in the very first episode it's like oh what's your name and he says his name yeah as the bell is going off and his name is like 10 seconds long you just <laughs> and you don't right. you don't hear anything that what he says and yeah they, yeah. they just called him fez yeah. Um, right. Another show that debuted in 1998, uh, Sex in the City. Uh, you know, I didn't really watch that one either. There's HBO. I, I didn't have HBO. It. Yeah, I don't think I'm the yeah, demographic. Probably. I'm sure yeah, I right. would not. Yeah, have... <laughs> yeah, not for us. But it's very, very popular uh, for the opposite sex. They very much think that that's a, uh, you know important TV show. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we got the King of Queens <laughs> debuted in '98. The King of Queens. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Um, Charmed. In 1998. Hey, now, King of Queens, no, had Patton Oswalt. Uh, Patton was great. Didn't I also show. have uh, Jerry Stiller? Did Jerry Stiller as well. Yeah. And he was great in that show as well. Yeah. I mean, oh. it's funny because it's like, even with that cast, it actually made Kevin James not bad. Right. Right. Okay. So, like, yeah, it wasn't Kevin... a terrible show. Kevin James was the main guy, right? Yeah. Okay. I didn't even realize Patton Oswalt was on that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's a bit part. He's just a side character. Well, okay. he's he's the he's Kevin James' best friend in the show. Ah, okay. Okay. see him quite often. Character. Supporting yeah. Character. Okay. Yeah, I don't really, I haven't really watched it because of Kevin James. I just don't. Find yeah, it I don't funny. care for Kevin James. Right. Nope. But I I know that Jerry Stiller's in it, and anything he's in is funny. Um, oh yeah. Charmed, like I said, Charmed came out in 1998. Again, I'm not the demographic for that. That's more of the Buffy crowd and whatnot. Um, right. Not there's anything wrong with that crowd, just not for me. 
Uh, <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong. Yeah. Uh, Cowboy Bebop was uh, debuted in '98. Uh, I've heard that's a really good show. Um, yeah, so have I. Yeah, definitely. Never seen it, but I've heard. Uh, Will and Grace debuted in 1998. Um, cool. Never really. It was like towards the end of the '90s. Like I didn't watch that one either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um. I mean, feel free to chime in if any of you guys have watched any of these shows and have anything from them to say, because mm-hmm. I got nothing. Uh, well, right, this one, right. maybe not so much. Whose Line Is It Anyway? That debuted in 98, at least for... Oh, the- yeah. yeah. Love that show. Uh, uh, yeah, I did. I mean, yeah, the American version, obviously, was the one that I started with. Um, so if I watch any of the other ones, like, the hosts aren't very good, like the British version. Did, like, it's just something about Drew Carey being the host, which really brings that show to life it just brings it to life uh because i don't know if you guys have watched any of the new who's line with the newest host but i mean she's just awful she makes you just not want to watch the show honestly (laughs) i don't know i was familiar i always got the impression that drew carey and the other guys were all like good buds and this was just them having kind of fun and making yeah right whether that's true or not that's the impression i got uh right well that's where the chemistry was for sure Right, and you just don't get that anymore. You sure you have the same cast, but you don't have that. You don't have Drew, and it just—I uh, don't know—it's just not the same. But yeah, they had some really great episodes with, with uh, like Robin Williams, um, and uh, uh, that what's his name, Richard Simmons. You know, oh wow, yeah. yeah. some really great funny. Episodes. I was going to mention the Robin Williams and Richard Simmons one. Um, but yeah. yeah, they're just. The old ones with uh, Ryan Stiles and, um, and Colin, Colin Mockery, Colin Mockery, yeah, Colin, yeah. and Colin uh, Quinn, <laughs> and Wayne Brady, and uh, yep, yeah, all that. I and mean, the other guy, and the other guy, mm-hmm. or lady, or lady, wasn't there right. a lady there Mimi, sometimes too? Couple, yeah, Mimi from the Drew Carey show would show up. She was funny too, right? Um, I do and, think uh, that show. Oh, go ahead, Laura Hall, Linda Taylor. <laughs> That show was like my first introduction to like improv comedy, maybe mm-hmm. like ever in my life. I think, yeah, and, yeah, I think so too. And I think I went to like some other improv shows that were local, and I was uh, less than impressed. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But uh, some were good, some were bad. Some were really bad. Um, another show that debuted in 1998, uh, Dawson's Creek. Katie Holmes, James Van Der Beek. Oh I, God, I what's never... his name? The kid from Mighty Ducks. Conway, Joshua Jackson, or something. Yeah, yeah, Joshua Jackson. That's right. Yeah, Dawson's Creek. Uh, that was all the rage for you know junior high. If you you were cool if you watched Dawson's Creek, you should watch Dawson's. Oh Creek. really? Yeah, because it was like this. <laughs> teen, I never watched it. It was this teen made like like a show made for us, and you know, and it's dealing with all these teen related problems, and we're all getting ready to enter our teenage years you know all that stuff we were yeah. in seventh oh. eighth grade so no it all makes watched, sense now we actually watched because I, I wasn't because uh, i wasn't cool oh no you weren't <laughs> um but yeah uh we watched because i didn't oh, watch no. it oh no you did you you were you were yeah we made sure not to invite you um but no just, uh no i think i think uh what was it? i can't remember I, we, I can't remember what class it was but we watched it actually watched an episode in school like we had like a, a BS day and someone brought in the VHS of Dawson's Creek episode. They taped last night and we watched an episode of Dawson's Creek. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I think it was like in a music class. Like it was in Wanato. Right. I know that, but right. When Mr. Bennett, I think, was that the name of the music? Class? Yes, that yeah. was him. Yeah. I think Mr. Bennett was out and we had a substitute teacher and we watched Dawson's Creek. Oh, okay. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Cause Mr. Bennett wouldn't, wouldn't no. stand for that. No. So, yeah, I never watched. Shout it. out to Mr. Bennett. Truth be told, I never watched it. If, if he's still, still if he's alive. alive, yeah, he might be. He might be. <laughs> he's he's he probably actually, alive. No, right? I think he had a heart attack, and I think he. I think he's oh shit! Oh man, and he lost oh, all that weight. Condolences to Mr. Bennett. Yes. Yeah, that guy was kind of a. He was kind of a prick, but yeah, nevertheless, <laughs> condolences. My apologies to Mr. Bennett. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Bennett. Um, oh, Watch out I... for those holes. <laughs> 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 oh shit it's raining out right now guys <laughs> uh that was a show that debuted in 2000 or 2000 jesus 1998 uh powerpuff girls that came out and watch it not for me yeah no reason to watch me. it yeah. moving on uh cat dog also came out in 1998 cat dog 
That was a watched Nickelodeon a show. Yeah. Uh, this was about the time I stopped watching cartoons. So, um, like new cartoons that came out on Nickelodeon, I was like, I don't really care. I'm getting into high school here shortly in a few years. I gotta, I gotta break this habit. So, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you gotta clean up your act and uh, <laughs> be an business, adult, right? Yeah. Um, two guys, a girl, and a pizza place came out in 1998. That starred Ryan Reynolds. That was my first, uh, first time I knew, you know, saw who Ryan Reynolds was. I, he was my favorite character on that show. Um, I we used to watch it. Um, it was it wasn't terrible, but it, it wasn't you know great either. Uh, I believe the, mm -hmm. the the girl on the show was the girl from Dirty Work, the main love interest. So, mm. um, mm. I don't think it's on anywhere. You can't watch it. It's not streaming or anything like that. So. You know, if you do get a chance, maybe check it out. You might like it. Uh, Becker, <laughs> Becker uh, debuted in 1998. Oh yeah, Ted Danson's Becker. Um, never watched it. That was a that was a oh, Cheers yeah, yeah. spinoff, right? Uh, was it? I don't think so. Was it? <clears throat> oh, wasn't the same? Fraser was. Fraser Cheers. was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Fraser was. I thought, I thought Coach Beck maybe. Coach maybe. I thought I didn't know what his name was in Cheers. I didn't know if it was Becker. I don't think Wait, it was. Frazier was a Cheers spinoff? Yeah. Yeah, he's a yeah. character in Cheers. Yeah. Really? Yep. Huh. Yeah. Frazier Crane, he used to hang around the bar. He was dating somebody and it all fell apart and he made a big speech and left and then he got his show like a few years later. Huh. Yeah. Um The Wild Thornberries <laughs> came out was uh ninety eight. Again, another Nickelodeon cartoon. I watched that. Yep. Yep. I did too a little bit, but I tried. To, I had to stop myself. Uh, Felicity. Nigel Thornberry is most ridiculous oh, character <laughs> ever. Uh, <clears throat> that's so true. His nose is like, like I don't know, <laughs> it's just outrageous. outrageous. There's no way he walks it's... around like that. <laughs> Something guy, is wrong. Nobody doctor never yeah. been in more need of a rhinoplasty than that guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Felicity debuted in 1998. Oh. Uh, also, Celebrity Deathmatch debuted in 1998. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, it's good stuff. That was all the rage show. You, that was cool to watch as well, obviously, with South Park and everything like that. But you watch that Celebrity Deathmatch where Hanson gets the shit beat out of them by Marilyn Manson. That's right. That's what happened in real life. Marilyn beat the shit out of him. It was kind of like those conversations in junior high. Uh, uh, yeah. you, if you watch those shows, you were cool. Uh, speaking of watching right. shows, if you want to be cool, The Wiggles debuted in 1998. The Wiggles. Uh, that mm -hmm. that one I stayed clear of. There's no way in hell I could watch <laughs> that. Um, I didn't. Um, mm -hmm. But I hear that what's interesting with the Wiggles, there's a lot of adults that grew up watching that are adults now. The kids that you know, grew up watching the Wiggles became adults yeah. and loved to go right. to Wiggles shows and will drink and have a great time singing Wiggles songs. It's interesting. It, it, right. It's all nostalgic. There's no reason for oh, these guys yeah. to be watching the Wiggles. I think Wiggles. I showed you that a long yeah. time ago, Chris. That's like, probably where I got it. Because I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know who the Wiggles were, but yeah, there some like some song about fruit salad, <laughs> fruit salad, yummy, yummy, and it's all these drunk people singing along <laughs> to it it's in so like a in a bar, weird. and they're performing live. Yeah, it's, right. yeah, that is fucking it was, weird. It was, it was, was kind of neat though, yeah. dude. I think the Wiggles should be like the ne the next Guar. Jesus. I, I think they. I think they're in the same uh, universe. Yeah, <laughs> they can go on tour yeah. together at least. They can tour. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they should. That would be awesome. <laughs> the Wiggles Guar, too. dude. Guar opens up for the Wiggles, man. That'd be an <laughs> awesome show. Was Guar Guar's a band? Sorry, I'm I'm naive at this. Uh, <laughs> oh no, you're right. Guar's a yeah. Is Guar a band? It's 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 like Guar is like S tier Slipknot. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we, yes. It was the in in high school for me. That was the uh, teachers are coming for smokers that were in the woods. They were like, that was the word uh. you yelled, guar, guar. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. That's great. <laughs> I never knew what it was. <laughs> That's awesome. Their shows are epic. They got all sorts of crazy antics going on. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never been to a guar show, but I've always wanted to go just once, not for the music, but for the everything else mm -hmm. oh it's fun it's yeah, that's why you go fun. i've, I've, I've yeah, saw them go. once yeah. uh and the last show to debut or at least that i'm going to mention that debuted in 1998 was trl total request live Ugh, good lord completely dominated by you know girl and boy groups pop groups you know whether it be britney spears i'm not sure if she actually came out yet but she'll be there soon backstreet boys and sync the only break was actually corn 
Corn showed up as like got the life, made it to number one, and so they would be invited on TRL. And there's just these <laughs> drugged out guys and dreadlocks and God knows what else. <laughs> and uh, then you got like the Backstreet Boys, these squeaky clean. Uh, right. it, was, it was an interesting, <laughs> yeah. you know, dynamic there. Uh, we got a was, top. Oh, sorry, going to. Oh, I was going to ask for Total Request Live. Was it? I forget. Like, did they pe- people had to call and request? songs and that they right. tallied it up like yep is that how they determined who was yep. you'd okay. have to call and uh they tally up the votes and see who got the number the most votes for the week or that you know something like that and or the day uh it might have been a weekly show i think it was just once a week but uh um yeah that's how it worked um let's see oh we'll get to the top 10 tv shows of 1998 uh the number one show of 98 on tv basic tv was er er um mm-hmm place for yeah, uh, sure. uh, Seinfeld. Uh, then we got Friends as number two, Frasier as number three, four was Monday Night Football, climbing back up, mm-hmm. climbing yeah. back up. Uh, five was Veronica's Closet, which I vaguely remember that name, but the hell is that? That's Christy Alley. Uh, I believe she also passed away recently. Um, All right. I, I can't remember exactly the <laughs> premise of it, but you know, it didn't last too long. Mm-hmm. But when it was on, it was a big hit right off the bat, and then lost steam. Uh, Jesse, right. again, uh, the one of these shows that I don't really remember. Um, yeah, that was uh, the sixth uh, show. The number seven was 60 Minutes. Again, climbing up. Oh, God. Uh, number eight was Touched by an Angel. Yeah. Hell yeah. And number nine was the CBS Sunday movie. <laughs> and uh, yeah, number 10 yeah. was Home Improvement. Uh, yeah. uh, the worst TV shows to debut in 1998. Fox and Friends. Just going to throw that out there. Um, that's that nice. old wow yeah it's that old yeah. uh that's a, a show on the fox news network where it's a bunch of, i don't know middle-aged people in suits talking about right-wing politics and whatnot fox right. and friends um huh. yeah uh, another worst tv show to debut in 98 young hercules which was the spin-off of hercules the, the next or the great adventures whatever it was the kevin sorbo hercules with xena and all that young hercules starred uh, Ryan Gosling, a young Ryan Gosling was Hercules. Oh, wow. weird. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, that show did not last long. And he was, uh, yeah, the show was axed. Uh, the Crow, he, Stairway he to Heaven. It. He did. He, he, he did all right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Crow, Stairway to Heaven. Don't remember that show. Neither do I. Uh, didn't yeah. last long. Um, Never even heard of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, and the last one, VIP. I remember this show. It was on, uh, it was like on like, what do you call it? UPN? Like at like eleven o'clock at night, it was a Pamela Anderson as like a like somebody who was like protecting stars and celebrities. Her and her other like I don't know security people. I don't know. It it lasted for a few seasons, but not for the plot, <laughs> not for the story, hmm. uh, not for the action, not for the dialogue, not in the just you know we take a few big guesses as to why it. It lasted as long as um, <laughs> I might have to watch right. it. It sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> uh, if we don't have anything else to say for TV shows, we'll oh, move Jesus. right into video games. Uh, there are a handful. So 98 was an amazing year for video games. And I mean that sincerely. It, it was an amazing year. Um, so if nobody's got anything to say, we will just get right into that. All right, let's do it. All right, and for video games released in the United States in 1998, on the 19th of November, for the PC, Half-Life was released. Mm -hmm. Um. Influential. We've talked about this. I think there was like an orange box, like video game release or something like that that had Half Life One and Two, something else on it. It was just Half Life. We've talked about a little bit on this podcast, but I think we, uh, yeah, we talked about Half Life Two. We not talk about the first one. I don't think we talked about no, the first. One. We only yeah, we've only talked about two. Well, I mean, I haven't really played it, but Brad has. Um, right. Anything? Oh, the first one. Yeah. I don't think I ever. God, I don't think I ever beat that one. Really? I don't know why. I know I've gone through two, right? But um, yeah, I don't know. Just at the time, it's just awesome. Hugely influential. Uh, yeah, just awesome first-person shooter. And... Yeah. Do you count Team Fortress as part of this? 
the, that was in the orange box yeah uh if that so was it's all, it's all it's all the same company yeah right well as i didn't know if that counted as part of this you know or not but yeah half-life itself a single i think single player game was, yes yeah was pretty good like puzzle sci-fi thing so mm -hmm. okay yeah. um we want to move on to the next one here some consider the greatest game of all time uh on November 23rd for the N64, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was released. Mm. I mean, yeah. I love that game. Yes. The music Absolutely. is, uh, it's Zelda music, it's phenomenal. Uh, the story is mm -hmm. amazing. The gameplay is amazing. The, the, everything about it is just top notch. Um, oh, yeah. Water Temple is a bitch, and I uh, could never. Oh, be yeah. This is before <sighs> the internet, before a uh, strategy guy. Right. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I played it back then, and I think that was like the first, like, you know, like open world kind of game. Oh yeah, where it's just like you you get out of a, a Kokiri forest and it's Hyrule Field, and the music kicks in. It's like, oh, I can just go wherever I want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, oh, what's over there? And yeah. and ever since then, you know, I've always loved open world games. Um, Esteban, you got any? Did you play Ocarina of Time when you were younger? Or did you? Uh, I had a 64. I don't know what I was doing. I was probably out fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, John had it. He got it at one point. And uh, I watched him play it. And of course, I'd wait for him to like go do something so I could play it. Um, but I got obsessed with it. And I got to the water temple and I just could not beat it. I just could not beat it, and I, I got tired and frustrated, and I kind of put it on the back burner and did other things, and I just never came back around to it. I do remember, I mean, Nick could probably tell you the story too, but Nick wanted to play this game first time he wanted to. It might probably was it your first time. I imagine it was. This is what this is the story I was going to tell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead, then you tell it. Yeah, it's funnier from your <laughs> point of view. Um, so I mean, obviously, I wanted to play the game really, really badly, you know, and they weren't letting me play, you know. Their older brothers, they're not going to let his younger brother play the game. But uh, not in order without to, payment. Right. In order to start my own game on uh, Ocarina of Time, my brother said that I, uh, I had to be goalie and uh, like, you know, goaltender for a while. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I did that. Uh, and then I was able to start my own game. So I, I forced him to stand in front of a uh, not a hard ball, but to take some shots, but uh, I don't think I saved a single one. <laughs> I, don't, or, I don't remember, honestly, yeah. it's been a while. So, yeah, and then they got to play Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, yeah, just hugely influential. I remember taking going on the internet at the local library and writing down, like, using the Ocarina, how to play other songs. So, I learned the, yeah. Simpsons, the Simpsons theme. On the ocarina on <laughs> Legend of Zelda, yeah, nice. They play like do 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 do. Yeah, uh, so you know you play those to other characters in the game and they wouldn't react at all. You know it is what it is. Um, yeah. Come on now to uh, <laughs> uh, I guess we talk about that for hours. Uh, March thirty first oh, yeah. for the PC, StarCraft was released. Now I imagine I'm leave this to Esteban and Nick. Oh yeah. Or Brad. Yeah, I never sure. played it. Yeah. Nope. Um, Anything <clears throat> that stick out to StarCraft that well go ahead. Uh yeah, I just I remember because like I, playing like StarCraft 2 for a while now, I totally forgot how like some of the mechanics worked in the original game. Like for instance, uh if you were trying to like mass marines as Terran, you can only select 12 units at a time, regardless. So it was really hard. You had to control group a lot of uh your your shit together. Because it only did twelve units at a time. Oh man! Um, I also remember that the medics weren't uh, med medvacs like they are today. They were actual like foot uh, units, uh, like ground units. Um, I, I remember uh, Boxer being like one of the best uh, Terran players in the world. Uh, was able to just like kill people with just a few Marines and some medics, and just with his microing um, and his control grouping is like. Basically, his macro and micro was out of control. Uh, could just take out your whole fucking base with uh, a few units. It's awesome. Yeah. This this was always like the premier LAN party game in that point. Uh, you know, I was at our computer lab at school. We would pretty much anytime there was a free period or any free time whatsoever, 
you go to the computer lab, you try to get a seat, you get into a, a land party game of a lot of times what we would play is uh, I guess you would eight player free for all, right. Cause maps were only like eight people maximum. And it's like, you know, idea is, well, everybody's on their own team and only one person could win, but obviously people would play politics and, you know, I'm allies with this guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, another really popular mode was you would, because you wanted to get your win ratio up, you know, we, we know how that is. You would go seven players versus one computer in like a custom <laughs> game, one easy computer. And everybody's like, oh yeah, dude, this is a free win. Let's just do this. And then inevitably somebody would always unclick the allied box, but you couldn't tell <laughs> who did it. So then everybody would be like, hey, I think it's this asshole. He didn't. <laughs> and then always the guy that was pointing fingers was the guy who didn't. Right. And then he like right. backdoors it. And that was always the ultimate satisfaction was to just kill everybody, make it a free for all. <laughs> uh, uh, I got some people pissed. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it seems that uh, I've heard nothing but great things about StarCraft 1 and 2 and whatnot. Um, Maybe someday I'll play them, but I'm not sure if I'm very good at those games. It seems to be a lot to learn, take in. Maybe you can implement, like, you know, play it, but to be a master at it takes a lot of practice and that time and effort. I just don't know if I'd ever yeah. devote that much, but who knows? Maybe someday. Um, on January 21st for the PlayStation, Resident Evil 2 is released. Hmm. Do you play this game, Brad? I, I played the uh, Nintendo 64 version. How was that? Oh, it looked terrible. I remember the, <laughs> you know, they they have like the full motion videos or whatever. Yeah. The, oh God. They Nintendo somehow crammed that. them onto a, they, they crammed them onto a uh, cartridge, and they were so <laughs> compressed. <laughs> At the time, I didn't really notice, but just like super blurry, a lot of big squares. Like you could see like huge pixels for the videos, and... <laughs> but um, no, great, great game though. Yeah, I, I I remember I loved it. Um, Esteban, did you ever play it? Yeah, I I uh, I went. To, I remember. So at that point in time, I think like I said, I was in eighth grade. I went to my grandma's. My grandma would pick me up after school, and we'd wait there till my parents got me. Well, when that game came out, I ran away from my grandmother's house because I I did do that sometimes because I had friends that lived in the neighborhood, so I just go to their house. <laughs> Right. And I remember nice. going to my friend Jacob's house and I just watched him play that game. Probably I stayed the night. I ended up staying the night because his mom ultimately called my mom. Uh, <laughs> but, um, and then we just wore the same clothes to school the next day. Oh, but no. he beat it over the entire night. You beat the whole game. Damn. Uh, I, didn't, I don't think I ever played it until the remaster recently. But I, that was, okay. I remember the day it came out watching him play it and beat it. And it was frightening, man. It was, it was oh, cool. Yeah. It was scary, fun, frightening. Nick, did you ever play that game um no i the only resident evil game i played i'm not sure which one it was but it was the one on uh, gamecube oh resident evil 4 i believe yeah i really liked that game it was fun that game gave me motion sickness i couldn't play it um resident evil 2 the first time i remember even seeing it i went to stay at a friend's house and uh him and his older brother had rented it and a few other things a movie that i probably shouldn't have watched because it gave me nightmares. Oh dear! Uh, it was like Tales from the Hood, or something like that. Um, and that was a whole fucked up thing. But uh, Resident Evil Two, I remember first time playing it myself. I could only get so far. There was like a sewer part that I got to, and I heard that's like this, it's like crawling around. I'm like what the fuck is that? What is that? You know, like Fallout Three did that with like ants in the sewers, and you're like this crumpling of like paper it sounds like bugs crawling everywhere and uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it turned out to be spiders and i freaked the fuck out oh, no. <laughs> and that was it for me i didn't touch resident evil 2 and i uh, i tried resident evil 4 on the like but it was like the remaster whatever it was not, maybe not remastered but it was released on the xbox anyway i got motion sickness i couldn't play it um but i can watch other people play it um they look fun they look like uh you know they got puzzles which always you know yeah interest they me always have like, like that those i just remember like you'd like enter a room and it'd be like a completely different camera angle right you had to control your character from like a totally different angle yes. i just thought that was so interesting about that game yeah it had like a um, fixed like, yeah like, the backgrounds were pictures basically and your character yeah. just kind of ran ran yeah, around that and... it's great um uh, we got uh for the it made it very uh, oh, dramatic sorry. yeah yes oh, which oh it just made it super dramatic added yeah. to the yeah. tension greatly yeah, because um, you don't know what's coming around the corner because you can't move your camera. 
Um, yeah. On mm-hmm. June 29th for the N64, Banjo Kazooie came out. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really a great game. It, but, yeah, said a lot of good things. It it got back in what was it? It got re-released on Xbox 360, like however many years ago. Okay. And I actually I beat it. Oh, that nice. time because <laughs> I was you know more of an adult and not a stupid kid. <laughs> Just uh, like wandering around <laughs> aimlessly collecting things, like where do I go? And then yeah. Uh, on September 9th for the PlayStation, Parasite Eve is released. On October 20th for the PlayStation, Zeno Gears is released. That was the second JRPG I tried out. I didn't like it as much as Final Fantasy VII, but it's hard to like his game as much as that. One thing I remember about Zeno Gears that I really thought was cool was the fact that you got to be in these giant mechs. You know, that was like your thing. You got to go to that, and I thought that was I was looking forward to that. But you could also jump on the NPCs' heads in town and just ride them around. And I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> mm. And that's what I did for about two hours. And then I never touched it again. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, this next one here is a all-time classic. Again, I mean, let me, let's see here. November 23rd it was Legend of Zelda. Well, then on October 21st on, for the PlayStation, Metal Gear Solid was released. Uh, mm. God, what a game. I remember... I I didn't I think I played it all the way through or John played it all the way through and beat it. I didn't get to I got to a certain part and then I got stuck. There was one part where right. like you had to escape like a torture chamber and if you didn't have a turbo controller, it was incredibly difficult to do. And if you were able to break free, you got the true good ending. If you weren't able to like many, hmm. many people, you got a different ending. If you failed it in something other way, you've got the really bad ending. Um mm. so many right. really cool like features to the game the stealthness of it all um i just love shooting like you shoot a guard and it's like oh dun 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 this music plays yeah and it's just like kicks oh, in. oh what's that noise yeah oh, what's that noise you shoot him in the head they don't find you yeah. all clear right. he's bleeding he's i love i love how that. like you i love how like you're in a box that box wasn't there before but they don't question it all oh, right right they're like oh it's just a box it's always been there <laughs> they just walk back away right um when i was a kid i loved playing that game because i thought it was cool to smoke cigarettes in the game right oh yeah and i was like oh um, sweet i have cigarettes in the game that's so cool uh but i i thought it was uh also really funny you know um it's kind of a meme actually uh when you die in the game and it's like yeah. snake 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I never really played it but i had you know, some friends who had a PlayStation and I'd watch them. I think I did play it a little bit, but I always liked how if the guards see you with a little exclamation point. Yeah. yeah. Or they go, bring! Yep. Mm-hmm. Or you could hide in a cardboard box and just kind of right. shuffle around. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, the was, only thing I remember cool. about those games at all is like, it seemed like those were the first games that were intentionally designed to sort of be a mind fuck. Like the, the story was never where you thought it was going. Right. There was always moments where like you thought you were like, you messed up, but the game kept going. <laughs> like there was things <laughs> like that that would happen. Uh, so that was new. Yeah, um, I know the second one was. Yeah, which one was Sons of Liberty? That was two, right? Oh, I could. That was definitely that. like that. Yeah. That yeah. that one. Yeah, the story was. It was. It became so convoluted. Like I had no idea what the fuck was going on, or who the bad guy is, <laughs> was and at some point you play as a completely different character for some reason and yeah i don't know oh that reminds me it was wild one. one of the the great things about metal gear solid that i remember that really caught me was uh it really it pointed out if you saved your game all the time so you're playing this guy i can't remember the name of the uh the boss you're fighting but in the middle of the fight he lets you know that you've saved the game so many times the game itself is keeping track so every time you save it, it keeps a number or something like that. So when the dialogue gets to that scene, it lets you know. It'll, it'll call you out on things, or it'll call you out on not saving enough. And so that was the first time the game like oh, broke yeah, the fourth weird. wall and like talked to the person playing it, and it totally fucked with your mind. Hmm. Um, it was really yeah. cool, really cool. Um, first time I ever experienced anything like that. Uh, there's another game called... Uh, fuck, what's it called? It was for the GameCube. Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. That's the game. Um, where you, the more insane you got, the more poor you're doing in the game. You, you there's like a sanity meter, 
Uh, oh and yeah, more and insane. it would just fuck with you. Yep, it fuck with the screen. It turned up the yeah. volume on your TV that actually wasn't like what the hell. Yeah. It make things go like yeah. blurry and like you thought your TV was fucking up, but it was just the game. Um, really cool stuff. It would like, like that. erase a save that yeah. that yeah, just it looked like it would erase a save, but it yep. didn't. Yep, exactly. I could just delete your save games. Yeah, That's cool. Yeah, it was really, <laughs> really cool stuff. But yeah, Metal Gear Solid, uh, classic. Literally would make people buy a PlayStation. Metal Gear Solid was like the PlayStation's Ocarina of Time. It was like the game you had to have. Right. Um, all right, we're gonna move on here to the October 29th. On October 29th, for the PC, Fallout 2 was released. Um, I really play that one. Big jump between Fallout 2 and Fallout 3, though, I tell you that. Uh, on October mm-hmm. 21st, for the PlayStation, Medieval. 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 Sorry, not Medieval, not mm-hmm. Medical. Medieval was released for the PlayStation. Uh, October 30th, for the PC, Grim Fandango was released. Uh, this game, I remember watching Ray play, and we went somewhere. We were gone for hours, and I mean hours, all day. We came back. He's in the exact same spot. There was something he, he just could not figure out. He was like beside himself. I was like, I've been here for hours. I <laughs> cannot figure out what to do. I do not know what to do. I've tried yeah. everything I can think of, and it's just not where. And I honestly can't remember what it was. But those games were incredibly difficult and not intuitive in any way. Like really strange stuff to get you to be able to progress the story. You had to do something that no one in a million years would ever think to do. Uh, right. For the uh, PC on December 3rd, or I'm sorry, for the 64 in the PC uh, on December 3rd, uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron was released. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I played that. Uh, I didn't really play that one. I was thinking it was yeah, the play it. it was the pod racer one, but that's not that's like next year. I think. No, yeah, uh, that's or a little later. Two years later, uh, on September. Yeah, you, f- you fly around. Yeah, you just fly around and shoot shit. That's cool though. I remember being. Yeah, yeah I think it was fun. a good one. That was a good one. That might have been Were the, the one... prequels coming out. Yeah, the, I think that time ninety nine. So next year yeah, we've got next year. Uh, Phantom Menace and all that. But uh, I think Rogue Squadron isn't that the one where you start off on Hoth and you can tie your yes. Like the legs of the walkers around, it's got a really cool. Yeah, I remember oh, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, we're doing that. That's good stuff. Uh, this was the year. Remember our last podcast we were talking about like Christmas gifts, and I'm like playing Spyro the Dragon because that was released on September 9th of this year. Spyro the Dragon for the PlayStation was released next Christmas gift that year, um, or maybe it was Britney's. I don't remember. It was one of them. Um, yeah, I played a little bit of that. It reminded me a bit what was kind of like in the same vein of Ban- Banjo Kazooie and all those other games like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, on June first, one of my favorite games out of the PlayStation that never gets talked about, Vigilante Eight. Thought it was so much fun to play. So it's basically like uh, Is this the one with like the alien ship. Yep, like the, the yeah, alien ship. I love that like game. Twisted Metal, but I thought it was yeah. fun. Yeah, Vigilante Eight. It's awesome yeah. game. So yeah. much better than Twisted Metal. I thought. Wow. Yeah, I played that on Nintendo sixty four. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it came out on 64. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, school bus. Yep. And, uh... Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we got a... Uh, oh, yeah, um... each character has their own ending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You had to, like, go through yeah. all of them to get the alien ship. Um, uh-huh. On March 25th for the PlayStation, Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit was released. Uh, this game was huge. I love playing it and uh, running from the cops. Not running, driving from the cops. Um, that was all the rage. That was all we did. Yes. Right? I think we rented Need for Speed 3 and uh, Resident Evil 2 when I stayed the night at my friend's house, him and his brother. So we played those games. Uh, and one of my absolute... I don't know if there's better wrestling games in, in history than the ones on the mm. 64. Oh, uh, yes, I agree. WCW NWO Revenge came out on October 26th for the N64. So much fun. Oh, so man. much fun. You and your three friends... Just all getting a wrestler and getting and just the, the gameplay was fun. The special moves were the game creation. Like uh, there was, I think it was WrestleMania 2000 where you were able to like create your own guy. But still, you I think you could edit these guys. You'd make like a ninja that, who has like these crazy like moves. Yeah. Was that the one where like if you when you're picking your character, like it tell it's they yell out their name and stuff, or is that a different one? Oh no, uh, that's that's WCW one. Thunder. Oh okay, yeah. yeah. Those. God, oh God, that's fucking hysterical. That might be yeah. next year. That was right. fucking hysterical. Yeah, but <laughs> you pick the anvil, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. 
uh, now I'm gonna go through all those to try and remember them, but I nope, I'm gonna waste time on that. Um, though that will do it for uh, <laughs> video games based in '98. We'll get to the worst video game of 1998. Uh, and on August 7th, uh, for the PlayStation, Batman and Robin is released. Uh, the game uses uh, elements of a sandbox style game. Uh, the player can choose one of the th- film's three heroes: Batman, Robin, or Batgirl. Each character uses a unique uh, vehicle. Batman drives the Batmobile. Robin drives the motorcycle. Batgirl uses the Batblade. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, in the game, the player travels around Gotham City and completes various individual missions, such as preventing Mr. Freeze from robbing a bank. Most of the events are not triggered. Instead, each event occurs at a certain time. For example, Mr. Freeze's bank robbery occurs at 7 p.m. The player must find clues and discover the plot with the help of the Bat computer. If the player cannot find enough clues, the events occur, failing the mission. Some situations are derived directly from the plot of the film, while others were conceived for the game. Uh, like the movie, the PlayStation game was critically and commercially unsuccessful, uh, as it had received generally unfavorable reviews, according to the website Game Rankings. Game Informer gave it a mixed review. One over two months before it was released stateside, uh, IGN noted in the review, In the end, you'll buy this game only if you're a Batman fanatic, not because it's a good game. Uh, Next Generation Generation said, while not in the same league as previous acclaimed licensed horrors, uh, (laughs) Batman and Robin is still pretty damn horrible. Uh, GamePro, however, said that the game isn't a great game, but its extra effort design shows and hardcore, and I mean hardcore uh, Batman fans will appreciate it. Uh, There was also a version of the game, uh, version for the game.com handheld, which got worse ratings than the PlayStation version. So, yeah. Um, that will do it for the worst video game of 1998, Batman and Robin. Um, yeah, it, it definitely looks pretty bad. Yeah. I'm watching gameplay of it. Yeah, worst movie of the year, and then follow that up with worst video game. Fantastic. Well, all right, guys. Um, Makes sense. I think that'll that'll pretty much do it then. Yeah, for 1998. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, thank. Mm. Welcome back again, Esteban. Uh, it's good to have you back. Um, gracias, hopefully. gracias. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for the survey, Nick. Seinfeld survey. Uh, well done there. That was a good time. Um, and all right. Yeah. Uh, and with that, I hope you enjoyed listening to our conversation and will join us again for another installment of History with Hirsfet. Thank Don't forget to hydrate, exercise, and to like and subscribe to the podcast. All these things are essential for your health and well-being. Take care of yourselves and each other. <laughs>